मैम यस सर प्रोफेसर ललित शर्मा कोर्स कीजिए इनको सर प्रोफेसर ललित शर्मा ओके को होस्ट करना है उनको यस मैम जस्ट इट्स प्रोफेसर ललित शर्मा so i have made him the co-host now बता सर अभी अपने कौन से गेस्ट बचे हैं प्रवीण सर आई एम अनेबल टू डू दैट द यूट्यूब वाला थिंग व्हेन आई ओपन इट देन देर इज अ वीडियो विच सेज इट इज अनेबल टू डू इट ओके नो प्रॉब्लम मैम लेट इट बी लाइक दैट ओनली सो आर वी एक्चुअली लाइव बिकॉज इट्स वी आर लाइव but i haven't put the streaming url maybe uh, because we have you are already do the same mail na on your system uh data sir abhi apne koi guest bache hain sir सुमारी वाला सर आने वाले ज्वाइन हो गए तो सर सुनिए ना नागड़े सर आप वेटिंग लिस्ट चेक करते रहिए यदि वो यस 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 भी हो सकता है वो अपने फोन से जुड़े हैं तो वो भी दिक्कत हो सकता है ओके हाँ सर चेक करता हूँ सो जस्ट टेल मी वेन टू बिगिन Yes, ma'am. Because so we are waiting only uh, one guest is remaining. Once they join, then we will start. Okay. Uh, one more thing, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, Dabey sir is there. Who? Dabey sir. Dabey sir is in the participant list. Please. Madhav sir. ढाबे 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 देवी का यस यस देवी का ढाबे आई हैव मेड हर द कोस्ट नाउ ओके Good morning, participants. We are waiting for our chief guest. We'll begin the program very soon. Stay connected with us.
the casa has mr sumari wala joined us madam he is he might be finding some technical issues in joining so whenever he joins we will take him in okay sir so we will begin the program then yes yes ma'am sure fine sir good morning and welcome to this virtual platform on this wonderful day we at shri binzani city college umred road nagpur are fortunate to host this 3 day international e conference on the role of sports psychology and fitness management for sportsmen during covid 19 pandemic era organized by nagpur sharirik shikshan mahavidyalaya nagpur in association with shri binzani city college nagpur post graduate teaching department of physical education Rashtra Santa Tukaroji Maharaj Nagpur University Nagpur and Institute of Science Nagpur we have a host of dignitaries who have graced this inaugural session president of today's function honorable shri dilip dhabe who is the president of kida mandal nagpur chief guest of today's function is going to join us shortly honorable shri adil sumariwala sir who is the president of athletic federation of india and ex council member of world athletics honorable president of nagpur shikshan mandal and a well known name in the automobile industry shri ashok ji gandhi keynote addressee dr steven christensen principal of our college dr sujit metre director of institute of science dr anjali rahat gaukar madam organizing secretaries dr tapan datta dr madhavi mardikar and dr sanjay choudhary organizing team and technical committee members resource persons of all technical sessions participants and dear students on behalf of the department of physical education and sports and iqsc of the college i welcome all of you to this inaugural session the pandemic era has brought with it several challenges sports persons have suffered in their own way and to deliberate upon the role of sports psychology and fitness management for sports persons in bringing them back on the track is the objective of this conference to take this further i request dr tapan datta sir officiating principal and organizing secretary of this conference to forward the introductory remarks datta sir good morning madam and good morning everyone on behalf of krida mandal nagpur sharik shikshan mahavidyalaya nagpur university binjani college nagpur PGTD of Physical Education and Institute of Science. I, Dr. Tapan Datta, organizing secretary, along with my co-organizing secretary, Dr. Sanjay Choudhary, welcome our today's chief guest. Though he my, he is facing some technical issues, so he will be joining us a bit later. He is Honorable Adili Sumariwala. He is the president of Athletic Federation of India and member executive council World Athletics. honorable sri dilip dhabe the president of krida mandal which runs our institution nagpur sharik shikshan mahavidyalaya and honorable sri ashok gandhi sir president nagpur shikshan mandal nagpur friends the covid 19 pandemic forced the world's population to alters daily routine including exercise habits this usual situation has physical psychological and behavioral consequences to all individuals including elite and recreational athletes the year 2020 was foreseen as a peak year for many sports performances that is athletes coaches and referees during which the realization of dreams would be achieved however the emergence of corona virus pandemic during february march 2020 resulted in a major global changes including quarantine and lockdown social distancing and cessation of commercial flights naturally 
this has a considerable effect on the world of sports as athletes could not train or compete as well as travel to international meets thus most major sports even planned for 2020 such as tokyo olympic games the european championships in association football and wimbledon tennis tournament were delayed athletes were faced with considerable modi modifications of their lifestyle and routines interpersonal relationships financial status as well as with the laws of aspiration and self-fulfillment. Those players who got infected by coronavirus disease experienced health concern as well as insecurity related to physical performance and occupational status. Other sports performers such as coaches and referees were also experienced meaningful changes to their sports engagement and career trajectories feeling less publicity essential than they were used to. Defaming the coronavirus experience within the various context of sports performers, career is imperative to enable the sports community to effectively respond and cope with the new dimension demanding situation, situations. While many sports performers were negatively affected by these situations, other might have perceived a rather positive. For example, injured athletes have more time to recover and inexperienced Olympi Olympians had time to improve their skills. Thus, specific career contractual conditions can be seen to influence the sports performance perception of and reactions to these unique situations. To all effective support, it is vital to accurately define an experience use, using valid conceptual frameworks. The present conference aimed at understanding the unique experience of psychology and fitness management of sportsmen during COVID-19 pandemic era. I thank our associate college, Sri City Binjani College, Nagpur, for joining together and working hard to organize this international e-conference on role of sports psychology and fitness management for sportsmen due with COVID-19 pandemic era. I also extend my heartiest gratitude to Dr. Stephen Christensen from School of Psychology and Counseling, Health Engineering Science Faculty, University of Southern Queensland, Australia, for accepting our invitation to be the keynote speaker on this three-day international conference. I am also thankful to all the resource persons, especially Dr. Avdesh Kumar Sisodia, Sirotriya from School of Education, Fiji National University, Fiji, Dr. Sanskriti Shabra, sports psychologist from India, Dr. Lalit Kumar Sharma. I must congratulate him also to become the professor now. And now he is Dr. Professor Lalish Sharma from Indira Gandhi Institute of Physical Education and Sports Sciences, New Delhi. Dr. Deepak Dogna from Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. And Dr. Binayak Kumar Dubey, also from Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, who will be delivering their lectures during these three days of scientific session. I am also thankful to all eminent personality from the field of physical education and sports who had accepted our invitation to be the chairperson of our various technical sessions, including a schedule during this three days international conference. Friends, before I conclude, I will be failing my duty if I won't thank all the people who are helping us in organizing and giving us technical support to make this conference a grand success. I personally thank each and everyone for their effort. Thank you, thank you one and all. And I hope that this international e-conference will benefit each and every delegates who will be joining us and delivering their paper. And those who have joined us only as a delegate, they will be also enriched with the knowledge of how to cope up with this pandemic phase 
when we are not allowed to go out how we can deal with our um, sports sportsmen so then they can maintain and uplift their sport performance once again thank you thank you one and all thank you so much sir our guest of honor today is the president of nagpur shikshan mandal and our guiding spirit honorable shri ashok ji gandhi an engineer by profession and a business tycoon by achievement shri gandhi has been truly inspirational for all of us i humbly request gandhi sir to bless us and guide us on this occasion thanks a warm good morning to one and all i am glad to know that nagpur shikshan mandals sri binzani city college nagpur in association with nagpur shikshan nagpur sharirik shikshan mahavidyalay pgtd of physical education and institute of science nagpur is organizing 3 days international virtual conference on a very relevant topic of sports psychology and fitness management for sports person during ongoing covid pandemic it is indeed a great moment for all sports person and sports researchers to listen to thoughts of olympian and chief guest of today's inaugural function honorable sri adil somariwala the source person sri dalit dalit sharma from new delhi miss sanskriti chhabra who is a sports psychologist and our very own honorable sri dilip dhabe president of kriya mandal nagpur the situation of pandemic has affected the mankind in general and sports person in particular the sports persons have faced dual challenge of physical fitness due to closure of practices like space halls gyms grounds and also the fear of unknown on account of scheduled tournaments livelihoods opportunities safety of near and dear dear ones and so on keeping the body toned for competition and mind focus for performance was a difficult task during lockdown situation in different parts of the world was different and so were the methods to keep the impact of pandemic minimum on one side world realized the importance of yoga and meditation in maintaining mental health on other side world has seen importance of green and lean lifestyles friends our sports people have given their services to maintain post covid mobilization in hospitals and they have given their services for micro exercises to the patients when the things get tough the tough gets going and the same is expectation from sports persons the countries also need them a strong pillar to help our society and support mankind in the words of dan gabel the gold medals are not really made of gold they are made of sweet determination and a heart to find alloy called guts sports psychology helps in building these guts 
as I wish a fruitful deliberation, exhibition of contrasting viewpoints and a meaningful conclusion over these three days conference. I also understand that our sports persons have great potential to influence people and they need to be torch bearers that is called sportsman spirit. My message to all sports person, coaches, sports administrators is same as Mark Victor Hassan has quoted, don't wait till everything is just right. It will be never be perfect. There will always be challenges of struggles and less than perfect conditions. So what? Get started now. With each step you take, you will grow stronger, more and more skilled, more and more self-confident and more uh, and more successful. Stay fit, stay motivated. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your blessings. We have with us Honorable Sri Dilip Dabe, sir, President of today's function and President of Kriya Mandal Nagpur, which runs the Nagpur Sharadik Shikshan Mahavidyalaya Nagpur. He has done his BE in Mechanical Engineering from VNIT Nagpur and MMS from Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management Studies. He has an illustrious career in international business and has visited over 40 countries. We are fortunate to have you, sir, as our chief guest. I request, uh, sorry, sir, as our president today, I request Sri Dilip Dabe, sir, to deliver the presidential address and share his valuable thoughts with us. Sri Dilip Dabe, sir. <coughs> Good morning, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I will try to keep it short so that we can start the main subject soon. Uh, it is indeed my honor and privilege to be the president of the inaugural function of this three-day international conference on uh, role of sports psychology and fitness management for sportsmen during COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, let me first thank Sri uh, Adil Sumiriwala, who I hope will be joining soon. Uh, he is himself an Olympian and President of Athletic Federation of India to accept our invitation to be the chief guest of this today's inaugural function. He accepted our invitation at a very short, short notice and uh, Dr. Subhash Choudhury, who was uh, also supposed to join our Vice Chancellor, he uh, was busy with NAC uh, peer team visit, uh, it seems, with Nagpur University. So thank you, Mr. Sumeriwala, for uh, accepting. And I also would like to extend my gratitude to uh, Sri A.K. Gandhi, President of Nagpur Shikshan Mandal, uh, Dr. Dhanraj Mane, the Director of Higher and Technical Education Pune, uh, who are the Chief Patrons of this conference. Also extend my heartfelt thanks and we are lucky to have you, sir, Dr. Stephen Christensen, Lecturer of Psychology from University of Southern Queensland, Australia, for accepting our invitation to be the keynote speaker. I would also take a moment to recognize the contribution of our organizing secretaries, Dr. Tapan Datta, who is the principal of our college, Dr. Sanjay Zaudhari, who is director of sports, uh, Sri Bindani City uh, College, uh, Dr. Madhuri Mardikar, in charge, uh, head of PGTD Physical Education, RTM Nagpur, for their uh, tireless efforts for last uh, many months, I would say, in organizing such a wonderful uh, conference and thoughtful conference, which will, of course, be very useful to all the people concerned. Uh, friends, as you know, everybody in the sports community is feeling the impact of COVID-19. Events and competitive seasons at all sports level are either getting cancelled or delayed and training facilities are closed. Uh, the virus is known to mutate and new, new, new mutations are uh, you know, coming every day. And we don't know, it may take several months, potentially years before the complete normalcy returns. 
So till then we will have to live with uh, this uh, virus and find ways and means of how to live with the virus and how to continue our normal life uh, side by side. Uh, all athletes, coaches, parents, uh, you know, sports stakeholders are scrambling to develop a contingency plan for these things. With limited live events to cover, media sources are also focusing on coronavirus pandemic, uh, which is further aggravating everybody's concern. Fortunately, mental performance and uh, mental health practitioners and organizations are helping to mitigate this effect of this extremely fluid situation through online support to some extent. Therefore, I feel the topic taken for today's conference will definitely benefit all the physical education, educationists, sports managers, administrators, etc., etc. Uh, to cut it short, I would like to end my speech with uh, by giving uh, the best wishes for a successful conduct of the conference. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your wishes. Uh, with this, we come to the end of the first part and uh, start with our keynote address. Our uh, keynote addressee is uh, Dr. Stephen Christensen. Dr. Christensen is a registered psychologist, a registered teacher, and a member of the Australian Psychological Society, and is also a member of APS College of Sports and Exercise Psychologists. He has been a faculty member in the School of Psychology and Counseling at the University of Southern Queensland since 1995. His research focuses on examining counseling consultations to strengthen practitioner training, supervision, and effectiveness. He has been collaborating with Indian sports psychologists and sports scientists since 1999. Sir, we are really privileged to have you amongst us today. I humbly request Dr. Christensen to deliver the keynote address. Doctor. Thank you very much. And I think um, the PowerPoint slides are being um, organized from uh, Nagpur. So um, they should be being shown soon. But uh, let me just begin by saying um, that um, I, I'm very grateful. Madam, please uh, uh, share his screen. Yes. Is this visible, sir? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Shri Gandhi, uh, Shri Daha, uh, Dr. Tapan Dutta, and members of the organizing committee. Uh, faculty, staff, uh, conference participants, and uh, conference presenters. It's, it's a great honor to receive the invitation. Um, and whilst you're joining me through a Zoom in my office uh, at my university, uh, my heart and my spirit is in Nagpur for the next uh, few hours and for the next few days. So I'm very grateful for that invitation. I'd like to begin um, not with my title, but with two wonderful images from the Tokyo Olympics. Everyone in the room uh, knows the wonderful successes of the men's Indian men's hockey team um, securing the bronze medal by beating Germany in the, in the third, fourth playoff. And it's a wonderful, wonderful achievement. But um, no one should ever forget these terrific uh, accomplishments of the women's team led by Rani Rampal, of course. Uh, they, some uh, couple of years ago, they struggled so hard to, um, to qualify. And of course, to beat Australia, and then go on to lose very narrowly uh, to Great Britain in the bronze medal at Blowout is a great credit to uh, not just Indian sport and Indian hockey, but really the resilience uh, of uh, athletes throughout India in the COVID era. Um, I wonder if I could go to the next slide, please. So my title is The Role of Sports Psychology and fitness management for athletes in the COVID-19 pandemic era. And what I'd like to do uh, in the presentation is to um, look to complement the other resource speakers uh, in talking about this general topic. Each of them have their special areas, um, but what I'd like to do is provide something of a different point of view 
uh, with an eye towards the future. The next slide, please. The aim of my presentation um, is uh, to foster a gestalt switch. And I've chosen a couple of ambiguous figures. Psychologists with us today will have seen these many times, uh, ambiguous figures. But I'd like to foster a switch so to see things differently. Now, I'm not talking about a cognitive reframing or the reappraisal um, of um, circumstances. Uh, I'm not think it's I'm not sort of encouraging my aim. It's not about thinking about COVID differently, um, but rather seeing it in an alternative form. So to encourage a refocus on the impacts and also its measures that it can be having. Dr. Stephen, I'm very sorry to disturb you. Can you just uh, increase the volume, please? Yes. Uh, look, I'll speak up. I will. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Please continue, sir. So I'm aim for a, a cognitive switch, um, a perceptual change in how we see the world. It's not going to change how um, the world is, but it might allow us to refocus towards the impacts of COVID and its measures rather than uh, simply continuing to be concerned about the alarm bells. Could you share the next slide, please? So again, it's another ambiguous figure. Uh, and I want to encourage people to refocus perhaps their sights, not their thoughts, from this infectious disease to the potential impacts that the uh, pandemic can have on sport, physical education, recreation, and also exercise. Next slide, please. But there's an important caveat that I'd just like to um, introduce now before moving on. Um, I'm not an epidemiologist and I'm not a health economist. Uh, I'm not an infectious disease physician. Um, I'm not seeking to minimize in my talk today the um, important role that these um, specialists have in um, combating, combating the COVID uh, pandemic um, and keeping uh, health and public uh, order uh, in, uh, in check. Neither am I a politician. Uh, I'm a teacher and I'm a psychologist. Uh, I'm a sports science researcher and uh, I'm an optimist. And so I'm seeking through this particular keynote presentation to um, make a contribution uh, towards helping um, society, but particularly aspects of sport, exercise, physical education and recreation to move from the current disruptions and disorder that we face because of the pandemic to um, a position where um, we have more social order and more functioning. So what do we know? Well, we do know that the impact of COVID-19 is diffuse, it's enduring, uh, it's um, uh, uh, undeniable. It impacts upon families, it impacts upon individuals and it impacts upon communities. We know that the pandemic is not confined to state or to national borders, um, to politics, to race, uh, to religion, um, it's a, a global a concern. We also know that the uncertainty is, uh, that it's caused is destabilising and that uncertainty doesn't easily go away. It might be diminished for a short period of time as the virus subsides, but it resurfaces or revisits again um, individuals and families and communities as another uh, variant um, uh, presents itself and new challenges present itself. What we also know is that um, the, uh, the, the complexity of the situation for politicians and the way that it's covered by the media 
um, has the potential to create some indifference towards it uh, among uh, people in India, but also in Australia, as they listen to on some occasions um, conflicting and the tug of war of different messages about uh, what to do or how to avoid or how to act in terms of protecting their own and their family's safety. So what we do know is there's this, um, there is key medical health advice, but there's a, a complex uh, arrangement, a contested de uh, domain or terrain tensions and tug of war that makes managing it um, more um, challenging. Could I have the next slide, please? What we don't know is the longer term impacts. And if we were to unpack that a little, we don't really know whether today, what is it about today? What's learned about today or this week or this month? What currency or relevance might that have tomorrow or in a week from tomorrow or a month from tomorrow? Now, why is that important for us in this conference? Well, there's a sense that perhaps the voice, uh, the impact is strong, uh, but the voice, the uh, ability to uh, convey a message around sport, around physical education, around re uh, recreation, uh, and also about exercise has been diminished a little bit because of the uncertainty and because of this strong dominance of, importantly, health focused messages, but other messages that are conveyed um, through both the formal and also um, social media. Now, why is this a concern and why does it relate to what we don't know? Well, we're not sure if this will be the first Olympics in a very long time that is ephemeral. That is, it's the results and the impact and the influence is a little bit like uh, mist or like fog. Uh, and, that, and that with, um, uh, with sunshine or with the arrangement of a small amount of time, um, that impact, that Olympic success, uh, evaporates or um, it's lost from public consciousness. The fear a little bit that shapes some of the things that I'll talk about next is that the legacy of uh, Rani, uh, the legacy of um, the Olympic men's team of Man uh, Preet and the other great representatives at the Paralympics and the Olympic Games from India, that their legacy in the future might be more short-lived than those who have gone before. Could I have the next slide, please? What can we anticipate? Well, we can anticipate that the, uh, the talk, public, but also private, will be more focused, continue to be focused on the immediacy of things what we need to do right now, how we need to organise and reorganise things at the moment for the present circumstances. And we can anticipate a continuation of the uncertainty in thoughts, in behaviours, in emotions and in actions. And of course, we can anticipate that there will be more mixed opinions about the way forward. It's a particular debate in Australia at the moment, as the federal government and the state governments are at loggerheads a little bit about what to do with the current um, Delta strain and how to move society forward. The reason I've mentioned these things is because of the potential of a myopic or short-term vision. And in my talk today, I'd like, I'd like to not be immediately concerned about um, the uh, progress towards the next Olympics, the Paris Olympics in just three years time. I'd like to take a much longer term view, a more circumspect view of circumstances. So my talk today is more about that last point. How can we through the work of this particular e-conference, 
how could we begin in terms of sports psychology and fitness management, begin to extract ourselves from this whirlpool of uncertainty, uncertainty in actions and in thoughts and in emotions and in behaviours. Could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Well, my talk is principally focused on the role that we can play. Um, and I'd like to uh, uh, use the talk to encourage perhaps a gestalt switch, a switch in vision, of course, like my um, ambiguous figures, the old lady and the young lady have uh, shown earlier but perhaps the beginnings of a switch from experiencing uncertainty as debilitating, as something that's stifling and stopping us from moving forward. And offering or proposing that we could begin to see uncertainty uh, as a somewhat facilitating. Now, how could I do such a thing? Well, I think we, we could do this by looking for lessons from history, recent history, and also past history, because um, India, more so than Australia, has not been um, a foreign, it's not been unaccustomed to periods of uncertainty and, uh, uh, and uh, dis, um, dis, um, location and that um, perhaps this current, albeit different, a circumstance might uh, allow a, a move forward by recognising the resilient and strength of India in its history at finding and charting a pathway forward. Specifically, I'm concerned with the notion of impact, and I'm specifically concerned with a working at ways uh, facilitating or encouraging ways that we might, at the moment, build capacity by measuring the impacts of COVID on uh, fitness, on research and on talent development. And that we might, in the immediate term, move from uh, uncertainty to a more purposeful action by looking at how those measurements those assessments and those understandings could be used to uh, build capacity for change in the future. Could you change to the next slide, please? Or how could we begin? Well, what I'd like to do is to revisit uncertainty. If I'm going to look to facilitate a switch from it being um, debilitating, to perhaps being facilitating. Perhaps we might need to understand um, doing a switch better. How might we accomplish that? And perhaps the starting point for such a thing might be, and I was very interested in some of the introductions of um, key dignitaries earlier uh, in the day, earlier uh, in the proceedings. Perhaps we can begin by looking at uh, the lessons that have been learned in industry and commerce and seeing what they might be able to offer us in sport, in physical education, in exercise and in recreation. Now, because I'm taking a longer view, not a myopic view, I'm often talking about or my thoughts are about youth. They're about physical education classes in schools. They're about youth athletes, development athletes, and those pathways. I want to just um, stop for a minute and tell a little bit of a story about the Olympic Games that surprised me. And that was a prompt, really, for um, some of the thoughts in this presentation. As you might already have guessed, hockey is uh, perhaps my first love. It's my sport and what I just enjoy watching all of the time. The story is I was very, very surprised by the age 
uh, of the or by the familiarity of the players in the Belgium men's hockey team. It was almost like it was the Rio team uh, brought forward five years and put into uh, Tokyo, the Tokyo Olympics. And of course, Belgium won the gold medal. And I was very surprised by the age or the familiarity of many of the players in the German men's and German women's teams. Now, my point here isn't to be ageist. My point is I was surprised that in five years, there hadn't been um, the circumstances that allowed for um, new blood, fresh players, the emergence of exciting young players coming through in those teams, in those, in those sports. And the reason I'm telling the story is young players were made it through in the Indian teams and in the Australian teams, featured many new young players, rookies to the Olympics. The reason I'm concerned about that is moving forward, not just to Paris, but beyond. If we don't begin to have an eye towards the impact of COVID on the nursery, for sport, on the nursery for recreation and physical activity, and of course, recreation, then we can easily find ourselves um, in three or four years time, finding that the pool of talent, the young people who are passionate about badminton, who are um, enthralled and, and who are um, stimulated by the feats of the Indian women's hockey team, and other sportsmen and sportswomen who represent India, that that pool of talent, the number of participants has diminished as the impact of COVID has, um, has caused people, families and young people to make decisions that bring them away from, or coaches and, and leaders um, have um, given away the work that they were doing previously to develop the youth. Perhaps we can make, we can begin by looking at the lessons of industry, understanding some of the lessons of the past, both in India's sporting history and also its wider history, and look at ways of assessing and measuring the impacts and apply what we know um, cleverly to be able to provide opportunities for the next generation. The, uh, the um, players who will take the place of this current crop of, uh, got, of bronze medalists from um, men's hockey and fourth place, almost bronze medalists from women's hockey. Would you mind changing to the next slide, please? So psychologically speaking, I just like to talk, uh, I'd like to look at my title again, and I'd like to unpack some of the terms uh, that are nested in or part of that title. Next slide, please. Now, this one is a little small, but when I'm thinking, when I'm planning, when I'm talking about roles, I'm talking about partners. And I'm talking about innovation and open-mindedness, brave and bold, roles that are in the past but in the future. When I'm talking about psychology and fitness, I'm seeing its mental, its physical and its social aspects. And psychologically speaking, I'm interested in that VUCA, that, um, that acronym, that takes up volatility and uncertainty and complexity and ambiguity. And of course, I'm interested in a gestalt, a seeing switch. When I see the pandemic era, I'm thinking as a psychologist and as a sports psychologist of change, of impacts, of facilitating. My vocabulary is about debilitating and facilitating and uncertainty and VUCA. But when I'm talking and thinking about management, my eyes and my mind is, are active around leadership 
about the lessons and the interactions between sport and business, about failure and success, but more importantly, a growth mentality or a growth mindset. What can we learn from experience? What can we learn from, uh, Man, um, from Rani, from Manpreet? What can we learn from looking back and talking at past successful Indian Olympic, Olympians? And I remember doing this in uh, Patiala in 2019. I'd met uh, Talok Sandhu, who was um, a basketballer in Moscow in 1980 during the conference. And then uh, after the conference um, dinner, we spent a lot of time talking about that Olympics and his experience since. Sitting and talking gave me a lesson, a tutorial that I um, am so grateful for. But I've had those same experiences talking to Australian Olympians. What can I learn from their, precariously from their successes and their failures? Not that they're teaching me, but they're providing the, uh, the lessons for me to learn. Can I have the next slide, please? So there are three topics I'd like to pursue. And my little friend here is providing me with uh, inspiration and uh, motivation to pursue these. Firstly, what are some lessons from business? How can we look at the impact of, in the first instance, physical activity in schools? And in the second instance, the uh, relationship between research in universities and the work of practitioners in the field, coaches and fitness leaders and recreation leaders. And the last of those is really a quiet call to arms, perhaps, and it's almost my take home message. If we could measure and monitor, that will give us the tools, that will give us the resources to then uh, act, to advocate for particular causes that may become lost in a noisy environment dominated by the uncertainty and the complexity, both at political levels, uh, at media levels, but also at administrative levels in both sport and also the administration of universities and higher education settings. So let me pursue these three topics by first looking at business. Next slide, please. Now, I'll read from my script here. Um, so if I don't continue to make eye contact with you, please excuse me. In the business world, two questions keep being asked and keep being answered. And my friends in business and management schools here remind me of that all the time. I suspect the same is true in India. The first is why do companies succeed? And the second is the other side of that same coin. Why do companies fail? Now, the reason that this research is so prevalent is because the answer is not clear cut, which, I, which means, and I say with a large smile, the, um, one of the findings of all of these uh, management and business research papers are more research needs to be done. But ironically, answers to the question, how have companies or some companies um, not only survived, but have thrived under conditions or environments of volatility and uncertainty and complexity and ambiguity, the VUCA environment um, is much easier to deal with. Now, the lessons for business, um, the lessons for business from these sorts of studies or studies of companies who have thrived under adversity happens to be quite simple. Companies do not fail because of what the world does to them or because the world has changed in some way or other. Rather, research into companies uh, uh, that have been successful in VUCA environments 
has found that um, first and foremost, um, it's what they do to themselves that causes a company or an industry or a, um, a group to fail. They fail to learn from themselves and they fail to um, uh, place um, and to fit their place, to find their place in new and dynamic and changing circumstances. Now, what might this be? What might be uh, relevant about this um, in terms of uh, COVID? Well, un as a psychologist, uncertainty may lead us um, in our um, circumstances to use heuristics or familiar practices uh, that we've used, that we've trusted, and have um, worked for us in the past. Uh, but which are neither relevant nor appropriate for the current circumstances. It might mean the relevance for this conference from business. It might mean that leaders in sport and in physical education, in exercise and recreation, may be reluctant to work differently or think or act or behave differently because the circumstances of the past have been successfully accomplished or achieved through a familiar um, devices and resources. What we might learn from business that may help us avoid the painful um, errors or the poor decisions of the past in sports psychology and fitness management um, in, the, in the near uh, future. Now, if I could have uh, the next slide, please. Uh, I'll, I'll just go to the next one and come back to that one. And now I'll go to the next one. Now, studies by Abidi and Joshi uh, have followed a similar theme in, res in research on... Um, 15 Indian companies from various business uh, sectors. Uh, and the gentlemen have written a book on their findings um, in 2015. Um, they concluded that like studies from North America, the failure of performance um, is a failure of learning. Failure in itself isn't a fault um, or a, a, a negative, um, neither is success. But failure um, by these companies can be attributed to failing to learn from the, the current circumstances and learning from the path. Now, reactions to the world, um, uh, sorry, reactions to what the world does to these organisations or because how the world changes around them uh, is caused because of behavioural and uh, systematic or organisational inertia. Well, let's talk a little bit about VUCA. What do I mean when I talk about I move from uncertain environments to VUCA environments? I wonder if you could go up two slides, please. When we're um, talking more specifically about uncertainty in business that may have relevance for us in sport, we might be able to use uh, some lessons and some literature from business and management. VUCA refers to ambiguous environments where uh, the unfamiliar is now uh, the norm and that circumstances are outside of uh, what you regard as your expertise or um, what is common to you. Um, that the current conditions give you mixed messages about how to act and what to do. Well, the second one, uncertainty, is for most familiar to us. It's an environment where uh, there's a lack of predictability. There's lots of prospects of surprise and the sense of awareness and understandings of issues are not as clear as they would normally be. The C, the complex, relates to this uh, fast-moving, dynamic, interdependent world where um, there's not easily seen cause and effect relationships. In fact, the, um, 
cause and effect seems to be somewhat circular and hard to discern. And the first of these items, VUCA environments, refers to the nature and the speed of change, um, the force with which uh, changes uh, occur and are unpredictable and are outside of your control. So one of the first of my measures before I uh, look to talk about what we might be able to begin to do about the COVID impacts in physical education what we might begin to do about COVID impacts on how we can sustain, enrich and support coaches and working for the next generation of, um, of athletes, working with India youth, um, requires an understanding that perhaps we might be able to see some of these things as begin to see them as facilitated in some way, rather than only treat them as um, damaging and debilitating, depressing, uh, and not providing us with a room to imagine or to adopt a growth mindset. Let's catch up with the slides. I wonder if you could move, I think it's two more. So let's um, just bring lessons from business to a bit of a, a close. The deeper meaning and deeper relevance of VUCA often relates to how people view the conditions under which they make decisions and solve problems. In general, uh, the premises of VUDA, VUDA, VUCA uh, tend to shape an organization's capacity to respond to change. They present boundaries for planning and policy management they come together in ways that not, uh, either confound decisions um, or potentially they could sharpen the capacity to look ahead, depending on how these environments are treated and approached. VUCA sets the stage for managing leading in sports psychology and in fitness, but only if we recognise some lessons from the past only if we're encouraged or perhaps um, invited to begin to see the current circumstances, yes, as enormously challenging and sometimes overwhelming, but perhaps they could be, with a switch, something that's facilitative. Now, I'd like to move to my first illustration. So if I could go to the next slide, please. Now, my first illustration concerns a COVID's impact on youth participating in sports, physical education and recreation, which I feel is now at something of a, a grave urgency for us to consider. So let me describe it a little bit to you. An organisation called the Active Healthy Kids Global Alliance um, was established as an established network of researchers and health professionals and stakeholders who have been working for many years, since 2014, to advance physical um, activity in children and adolescents uh, throughout the world. Now, what this alliance has done is to launch a global matrix, which is uh, nothing more than a, a country by country, a nation by nation report card where there are some standard um, set of measures on the level of physical activity of children and adolescents um, in the member countries of the Alliance. It creates a report card from A as the best score down to F as the lowest score on physical activity in youth in a particular country. Now, what's the relevance to COVID? Well, uncertainty and VUCA may lead to restricted opportunities for the participation by youth in sport, in recreation and in physical education. Now, COVID concerns, of course, by uh, practitioners, but also by um, administrators, 
may inadvertently foster um, a limited participation, uh, a difficulty in being um, um, participating in these ventures and these activities for youth. Families might also be reluctant about their sons and daughters and their cousins participating in sport and exercise for fear, for the COVID fears of infection and transmission. Now, the concern is the downstream effects of this, the downstream effects of, the, of limiting and lacking, uh, diminishing participation in physical activity in youth. There are obvious health benefits uh, from being active, and there will be not immediately, but in long-term health decrements by young people not growing up with um, physical activity as a habit, as a regular routine habit, rather than being seen as something that is um, overly cautious to be about. Now, what the report card does, it allows a vehicle uh, to increase awareness about how member countries are providing access to physical education and physical activity. Uh, the topics or the indicators um, have increased over the years and they're scored internally by each country. But then the findings are distributed, the graded findings, the report guards are distributed internationally. So I'm wondering if we can look at the next slide, please. So here's a short summary of the report cards from the, um, from the Alliance to in each year from 2014 to 2020. Now, last year's report card has been postponed, but what initially started was 15 countries using a set of uh, common indicators or criteria um, and an auditing panel to assist to provide a report card on how um, youth are physically active. They've gone from 15 countries to 60 countries in six years. Um, it's made, um, it's gone from 135 assessments to now uh, over five, 490, over 500 assessments. Now the report is due, um, report card four is due to be released this year. Um, and it's, in, it, um, it's expected to include 60 countries. Now India joined in 2016 and has continued to participate in the Alliance. I'm hoping everyone can see those who like me have a passion for physical education as well as sport, that if we can collect information on physical activity, then what we have is a set of resources, set of information that we can use to shape policy. We can um, bring forward, it's independent, there's benchmarking against other countries. We can bring that forward to be able to shape um, state, but also um, national policy on how to make physical activity uh, more accessible uh, to um, primary and secondary age students and beyond. So some of the indicators in these report cards are overall physical activity, organised sport and physical activity, active play, which is a spontaneous play, active transportation, riding a bike to school rather than a tuk-tuk, um, sedentary behaviour, physical fitness, family and peers, school, community, environment and government um, contributions. Uh, could I have the next slide, please? Now, the findings are published um, in the Journal of Physical Activity and Health, and they're the global findings. So we've got records of the progress made on these indicators across now a large number of countries. And one of the, uh, the emphasis of the Alliance is to encourage not uh, competition between countries, as happens in the Paralympics and the Olympics, but encourages 
a collaboration and cooperation between countries about how they might be able to shape public policy and how that might be filtering down to opportunity and resources that allow youth to become active. Unlike the Olympics, all countries can be winners. Being active is um, not just a choice, but it's a way of life. But importantly, the Alliance see it as something that is uh, driven by pervasive cultural norms. And I know talking to colleagues um, in India when I was last there in 2019, there was a great deal of concern about the impact of a Western diet on young people and on inactivity in young people that paralleled their concern about a lifestyle disorders of the elderly. And there were steps being taken at the time to try and do something about that, that um, had um, strong support uh, from the, um, the Indian government. Well, what's my point? We may suspect that uh, the impact of COVID is having on uh, physical, educa uh, physical education and sport. But if we can measure and monitor, we can understand this better. More particularly, we've got data that we can present um, as evidence of the fact of just what the impact happens to be. It's reliable data. It's benchmarked against other countries. We can see the change over time from where India was, where Australia was in 2016 to where we currently are. And we could begin to be able to put things into place, make the changes at the policy and uh, procedure level, at um, state government and national government level, at local level, that encourages greater uh, activity. Um, if people are interested, you could use the, you could go to the website and see just the vast amount of information that the Alliance is using and the thoroughness and the professionalism. Uh, Stuart Biddle is the leading um, exercise psychology researcher, um, health and exercise researcher at my institution. And Stuart is a, a famous, a renowned um, researcher with a, a great um, publication record. And perhaps people who are interested after looking at the journal or looking at the website might uh, contact Stuart or Jonathan Kagus, who's a PhD student from the Philippines, who's um, particularly interested in working on this area, uh, both for the Philippines, but also for Australia. I wonder if I could move to my second illustration. Um, the next slide, please. So my second illustration uh, about the impact of COVID and what we might begin to do about it, again, concerns measurement. It, it uh, again concerns collecting data that might influence change in the first instance. Let me describe a little bit about that. So the title of this project looks at the relevance and the application of sports science research. It's not concerned about physical activity in schools, it's concerned about the relationship between researchers um, in universities and institutes of um, sport and the practitioners, the coaches, the exercise leaders, the fitness leaders, the physical education teachers who would be using the outputs and the outcomes of that research. Now, we're currently working on some projects in this space and what got us motivated about this was really a clash of information or clash of findings. We've got really strong research from the Australian Institute of Sport from a few years ago that talked about the close working relationship between coaches and sports scientists in terms of understanding the needs of sport and the needs of coaches at the elite level and the pre-elite level. Um, um, the coaches understood their needs and felt that they could communicate these really strongly and clearly with sports science researchers. And in upon interviews and, and the research showed that sports science researchers believed they had a really clear understanding of the needs, the research needs of elite coaches 
um, and pre-elite coaches. But this sort of understanding isn't what we find in other find research done in terms of the impact and the relevance and the application of sports science research in other areas of the world. Now, what's the relevance of this to, to COVID? What's the relevance to uncertainty and VUCA? Well, the, it may lead to restricting of opportunities for interaction and collaboration between sports science and coaching. And the case where universities um, might, because of the COVID pandemic and because of the uncertainty that that concerns, might squirrel away and do their research on what they think needs to be done. And similarly, uh, coaches um, and um, administrators at, in sporting organisations might feel, because of the COVID impact, that they don't have a connection to be able to um, discuss, to collaborate on what those... Um, that, what's that sort of research that can make a difference in the field might look like. Now, the premise of this research is quite simple. In terms of sports science, coaches seek to improve athletes' performance. Sports science research is critical to helping them to do that. So the question for us, but for other researchers across the world is, well, what's the impact of the research on coaching and teaching? And the, the most current research that we're reading is not very complementary of that impact. And it talks really about a disconnect between understandings and a disconnect between the language that's used by sports scientists in disseminating and describing their research and the language and the capability of coaches uh, to be able to uh, follow, to digest, to um, understand and assimilate what they're saying. Well, why should we be concerned? Well, there's a very good chance that without some remediation, we might be uh, not um, necessarily in Australia, but we might be reproducing the mistakes of the past and um, throwing our hands up in the air saying, well, the challenges of working closer with coaches and therefore impacting on performance of athletes um, from beyond Paris 2024 may be too difficult or become intractable. Could I have the next slide, please? Said more boldly, we may be um, losing youth from sport because of the impact of COVID on participation but we also may be losing coaches, um, experienced coaches and, um, and vital coaches and uh, physical educations and teachers. We might be losing them also from sport because the things that in the past have nourished and recharged them that help them train and prepare the next uh, Manpreet Singh or Arani Rampal and others really are not there to provide them with that uh, impetus to keep going. Of course, uh, you will guess our orientation is toward Brisbane, the Olympic Games in my home city in uh, 2032. So we're looking to play a long game. We're looking for the long, um, long view on things. Um, and we're concerned about how we might have an impact or an influence on the future performances of athletes. And we believe the way we might be able to do that is by impacting on the quality of the research. And we might, we believe, our research at the moment that we're looking into, we believe that we might be able to do that better if our studies connect and invite practitioners, sporting organisations, coaches, exercise leaders, others in that practitioner space. Invite them to become partners in the research. That's where we'd like to be in a short time, a couple of years' time. That is, those people become partners not in just disseminating the knowledge utilisation side of sports science research, but we want them 
as partners in the knowledge generation aspect or stages of sports science research. Why? Because we believe looking at the work that was done in Australia a couple of years ago by a John Williams at the Australian Institute of Sport, we believe we can have the same sort of a relationship if we reach out and build partnerships um, with practitioners, rather than uh, do what appears to be occurring uh, in some research centres and some um, uh, universities, where sports science happens independent of the needs and the interests of sporting organisations and the users of that research. Our reasoning is that research with impact and application conducted in the next couple of years has the potential to influence the actions of people in sporting organisations, schools and sporting clubs, the coaches and the practitioners who introduce, recruit and introduce and train the next generation of Olympians. So look, just briefly, we're looking at a different design, different research design that not just makes um, practitioners partners, but asks them, begins by asking them um, what sports science research are they using? What would they like to use? But doing it at the level of a sport and at the level of a competition. So all of the coaches within a particular competition um, are what we think is the, the sample or the population for that sort of um, knowledge at that specific level. A couple of things about this before we move on. We don't hold an a priori position on the outcomes that we want to see. We'll, we'll let the data tell us those outcomes. We don't have that already in mind. Um, other than we've got a, a, um, a philosophy, and it's that practice-based research should make a meaningful contribution to the field. It should make a contribution to sport, to physical education and exercise. Yet that's only possible if the outcomes of research are palatable, understandable, palatable and digestible by the practice-based audiences that the work is intended for. The work, that work was never intended just to be left into journals, uh, only to be um, the source of an, the next uh, study. It was always intended to be um, used at the level of practitioners. So we feel that if we invite um, people to help us to identify and solve problems, to be, become partners in the research, to help design, to implement and disseminate um, the, uh, those processes of research, then we can improve the impact of sports science research and the questions of its relevance and the questions of its uh, application are a little bit like ghee in a warm pan those things um, become liquid and they dissolve. All going well with our studies, we should be looking to develop those partnerships. Why? To deal with the potential impacts of COVID-19 um, and other matters uh, on the full potential that it can have with sports science. So how might we begin again by measuring? The next slide, please. How might we begin? Well, we might begin by looking at the impact, begin by measuring and, and understanding what the state of affairs are, to be able to use that knowledge to be able to bring forward to um, change policy and to bring forward in terms of actions and advocacies. And for those who might be interested now or in the future in that area of the relevance and the application of sports science research, um, perhaps a place to start 
for, um, for learning from one another. I might be talking with uh, myself, Andrea Lamont Mills, uh, like um, Stuart Biddle is a senior researcher in our university. She's the, um, the uh, deputy dean, the associate dean of, of research in the science, engineering, um, and uh, health faculty. So she might be a candidate who you could talk about uh, if uh, there was interest uh, in that some more. So the next slide, please. So how might I begin to close my talk? Uh, perhaps by using or by revisiting that famous quote from Kurt Lewin. There's nothing more practical than a good theory. And perhaps I can begin to close my uh, presentation today um, by um, drawing upon a theory that might help bring these things together and provide a, a stepping stone for the um, presentations by uh, other resource people today and in the days ahead. Next slide, please. Well, I've chosen the theory of planned behaviour and there'll be many in the room the rooms who will be very familiar with it. I'm not particularly interested in asking or inviting you to change some action or behaviour, but I'm hoping talking about COVID, uh, by talking about uncertainty, by talking about the VUCA uh, environments, by encouraging a switch, by encouraging not debilitating, but a facilitating look at things. I might begin to shape some of the intentions that you might have for um, dealing with impact, not by changing things, but by measuring and um, by assessing and collecting data on the impact specifically. So we could use that for change. And perhaps um, what I'm um, doing today um, in any of those areas in terms of uh, providing nudges or encouragements in the attitudes that people currently hold, um, or perhaps the, um, their perception of control or behavior that they currently have, um, or maybe the norms, the, um, the social norms and the social expectations that people have of their current role and what that might be possible what that might do or be possible moving forward. Perhaps um, my talk today and some ideas shared might contribute in any of one of those spaces and therefore foster uh, perhaps something in terms of intentions uh, for uh, different uh, ways of um, thinking or seeing or behaving. Um, so um, I'm hoping to somehow have set a scene for the other resource uh, people uh, to be able to contribute these discussions around the impact of COVID. And perhaps as a part of a package uh, together, all of the resource, uh, resource people can assist and guide current practitioners, instructors, administrators, and leaders about a way of moving forward in a facilitative way in the medium and long term to um, mitigate um, some of the uh, COVID, um, uh, the impacts of the COVID era, but specifically around physical education, sport, recreation. Um, uh, so perhaps um, I think that's most of my things there. Perhaps if we go to the next slide, Revisiting my aim, perhaps there's been a chance to encourage a switch and that we might be able to do things that mitigate. Um, our role might be to begin to mitigate the impact that, it, uh, that COVID is having in, our, in those three uh, four domains. And the next slide, please. This is one of my favourite pictures. I'm hoping I was um, a reasonable teacher on, the, on one side of that slide, but this is one of our favourite pictures. Unfortunately, the backdrop is Sydney, not Brisbane. 
The Australian women's cricket team are in Brisbane at the moment. Uh, they're in isolation for two weeks because of COVID. And so is the Indian uh, women's team. And they'll be playing a large number of um, uh, games, fixtures um, in Queensland as a part of a test series. It won't be for the World Cup, which people may recognise just there. But I love this picture because they're two outstanding leaders um, in this sport, of course. But what's visible there is the great respect and perhaps friendship that these two um, women have for one another. It's a wonderful picture. And for cricket enthusiasts, I hope you'll be, uh, in the next uh, few weeks, you'll be um, looking at the results from here in Queensland in the test matches, the 2020s and the one days between Australia and India. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. And I'll hand back um, the microphone to uh, the organisers. Participants, do we have any questions? Feel free to post them in the chat box. We'll take it up from there. Dr. Stephen, there are many thank you messages in the chat boxes. Both the YouTube and the Zoom one. If there is a couple of questions that you notice there or that you'd like to pick forward, I'd be happy to take a couple of those. Or if there are some questions that in particular um, some of the um, resource people or senior leaders have, I'd be happy to take some of those if time permits. Yes. As of now, there are no questions, sir. But in the course of the deliberations, there uh, might come up uh, certain questions. Maybe later on, we will get back to you, sir. That would be fine. I would be uh, honoured to take questions through the course of the conference as, um, as we move forward. So look, thank you very much for allowing me uh, to be um, a part of this uh, wonderful e-conference. And as I said, um, for a, a little time, uh, my heart and my spirit is back in India, a country who I love and who I have visited many times since uh, 1999. I haven't been uh, to Nagpur, um, but my fingers and toes are crossed at the moment that it um, will be possible uh, sometime in the near future, not the long future. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful and well-researched inputs on the topic. Uh, we are sure that the participants would benefit by your experience and expertise. Uh, this can be taken up for the, by the researchers also. This topic can further uh, go into much research and certain deliberations in the two days to come. Again, would uh, finalize certain things. I'm thankful to you, sir. Uh, we move on to the last segment of this session, the vote of thanks. On behalf of the physical education and sports departments of the four institutes, I take this opportunity to thank all the eminent dignitaries of, uh, who have graciously consented and joined today's function. We are highly indebted to President of Nagpur Shikshan Mandal, Shri A.K. Gandhi sir, for giving us permission to host this conference and for guiding us at every step. We also extend our gratitude towards Shri Dilip Dhabe sir for accepting our invitation and presiding the inaugural session. Thank you, sir. We appreciate the presence of our international keynote addressee, Dr. Stephen Christensen, sir. His insight and inputs would go a long way in taking us further in these deliberations. 
I also thank the principal of our college, Dr. Sujit Metre, whose mantra of life, presence, participation, progress motivates us every day. Thank you, sir, for your encouragement. I also thank the three organizing secretaries of this conference, Dr. Tapandatta, Dr. Madhavi Mardikar, and Dr. Sanjay Chaudhary, who have been incessantly working to the best of their abilities in making this conference a success. With this, we come to the end of the inaugural function. I hand over the proceedings to Dr. Kumkum Boratkar, Associate Professor NSSM Nagpur, for the first technical session. Participants we, uh, are requested to stay connected with us. The feedback link will be provided in the chat box after the second technical session today. Thank you so much, everyone. Madam, you're muted, ma'am. Namaskar. Namaskar. I'm Dr. Kumpu I'm Dr. Kumpu as an associate. An associate professor, associate professor in Nagpur Sharidik Shikshan Mahavidyalaya. And there can be, if there are two devices, ma'am, I please. am privileged that I am here today to welcome and introduce two eminent personalities of this first session of this three-day e-conference on role of sports psychology and fitness management for sportsmen during COVID-19 pandemic era. I feel very happy to welcome Dr. Sharad Suryavanshi, sir, here to grace this first session as a chairperson. Welcome, sir. I find it really, really difficult to introduce Dr. Sharad Suryavanshi as I do not know what not he is. Let me start with his human qualities. I feel from the bottom of my heart that Dr. Sharad Suryavanshi is a very good friend and hardworking person who believes in teamwork and knows how to make his teammates comfortable to work and feel proud to work with him. He is very caring and takes care of his whole team as a very concerned team leader. Coming to his formal introduction, Sir is Director of Sports and Physical Education in Rashtrasanta Tukroji Maharaj Nagpur University. He is working since last 28 years in our university as a teacher at undergraduate and postgraduate levels. Sir is winner at All India University Cross Country Championship with national best time. He secured many gold, silver and bronze medals as an athlete and as a cross-country racer. Sir is member of many respectable athletic associations like uh, founder of some associations in Maharashtra, uh, president of some associations, and as a secretary and a member of many associations. He is recipient of Krida Bhushan National Award 2018 by Avishkar Foundation Goa. It is nice to mention here that he got uh, Best Organizers Award by Khel Khiladi, Khel Sansthan Nagpur from 2011 to 2017 continuously. He is recipient of Best Teachers Award twice in 2011 and 2012. He did a hat trick in receiving Best Athletes Award in School State Athletic Championship organized by Department of Sports, Government of Maharashtra from 1985 to 1987. Not only this, in the same year of 1987, he was also Best Athlete at School National Athletics Championship organized by School Games Federation of India. He also was Best NCC Cadet in 1985 at Combined State Annual Training Camp organized by NCC Maharashtra. He worked as a technical chief at various 
cross country and marathon races the best is to be the all india inter university cross country championship 2012 he also worked as an organizing secretary and technical officer in asian marathon asian athletic grand prix tournament commonwealth youth games and pune international marathon welcome you sir once again now i welcome ms sanskriti chhabra who is our guest speaker for this first session sanskriti chhabra a former badminton player and a delhi university gold medalist in ma applied psychology is a well known sports and exercise psychologist in india she has specialized in sports and exercise psychology from university of post mouth united kingdom with a distinction score currently she is associated with the gaudium school and health and pro health asia india she has worked with international badminton players of india and england she worked with tennis players also she also worked with players of golf shooting archery swimming squash cricket basketball athletics cycling gymnastics shooting triathlon and many other games she channels her efforts to bring principles of psychology closer to sports she facilitates the athlete athletes in enhancing their mental toughness with an experience of using tools like neuro tracker vna testing system fit lights and sports vision trainer she has a rich exposure in conducting workshops for athletes coaches and parents as she was also responsible for delivering guest lectures for sports and exercise psychology at jesus and mary college university of delhi she is actively involved in behavioral research related to sports and she has published her learning outcomes on her blog and through research papers welcome madam now i hand over this session to dr surya vanshi please sir नमस्कार मेरी आवाज आ रही है आप तक मेरी आवाज आप तक आ रही है यस यस सर सर प्लीज प्लीज नमस्कार आप सभी को नमस्कार नमस्कार सर्वप्रथम तो इस विषय को लेकर जो चर्चा सत्र हो रहा है आज शुरू यहाँ पर उसके लिए मैं बधाई देना चाहूंगा जिन लोगों ने इसमें पार्ट लिया इसको सब कोऑर्डिनेट किया और संस्कृति छाबरा जी जिनका नाम सुना था आज पहली बार उन्हें ऑनलाइन क्यों ना देखने को मिला है डॉक्टर सुवर्णा भालेराव जी भी उनको चरण स्पर्श करता हूँ डॉक्टर तपन दत्ता जी जो प्रिंसिपल शारीरिक शिक्षण महाविद्यालय नागपुर के डॉक्टर मेत्रे साहब प्रिंसिपल एस कॉलेज डॉक्टर माधवी मार्डीकर पीजीडी की हमारी कोऑर्डिनेटर मेरी सहकारी और इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस की भी स्पोर्ट्स डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर संजय चौधरी जी डॉक्टर राजरतन दुर्गे जी डॉक्टर कुमकुम बोरटकर जी मेरे सहकारी सभी प्राध्यापक गण और छात्र छात्राओं एक अच्छा विषय लेकर नागपुर शहरी शिक्षण महाविद्यालय आप सभी के सहयोग से सामने आया हुआ है कल कल परसों तक मैं आदिल सर से बात कर रहा था आदिल सुमारी वाला जी जो इनोग्रेशन फंक्शन में आने वाले थे कुछ कारण से वे हमारे साथ ज्वाइन नहीं हो पाए उन्होंने शुभकामनाएं दी है और उन्होंने कहा है कि आज दिन भर में जब भी समय मिलता है वे हमारे साथ ज्वाइन हो गए खास करके उन्होंने डॉक्टर तपन दत्ता जी को कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट कहा है कि आपने बहुत अच्छा ये ऑर्गेनाइज किया है आज हमने जो विषय चुना है कि फिजिकल फिटनेस और मेंटल टपनेस के बारे में हम लोग चर्चा करने वाले हैं जब भी ओलंपिक्स मेडल्स की बात आती है तो हमारे ध्यान में आता है कि आ, हम ओलंपिक्स के मेडल तक पहुंचते हैं पहले तो ऐसा था, था कुछ दो चार ओलंपिक के पहले तक कि हम लोग सिर्फ जाते थे और अपना अटेंडेंस लगा के आते थे बहुत कम होता था ऐसा और बाद में 
अभी पिछले दो तीन ओलंपिक से ऐसा हो रहा है कि हम पहले आठ दस में आ रहे हैं तो अभी हमको मेडल्स में कन्वर्ट करना है हम लोग फाइनल्स तक पहुंचते हैं परंतु फर्स्ट सेकंड थर्ड में आना थोड़ा सा मुश्किल हो जाता है या कुछ और कारण बन जाते हैं पर मुझे लगता है इन सब कारणों में कारणों में सबसे महत्वपूर्ण कारण है कि हमारा फिजिकल फिटनेस और मेंटल टफनेस और इस विषय को लेकर ही आज हम लोग इस हमारा जो फर्स्ट सेशन है उसमें चर्चा करने वाले हैं संस्कृति छावरा जी जिनका नाम पूरे देश में है कई लोग उनसे रूबरू हुए होंगे उनका व्याख्यान आज सुनने को मिलेगा तो मैं ज्यादा वक्त न लेते हुए संस्कृति जी को भी बेस्ट देना चाहूंगा कि आपका यहाँ पर अभी उद्बोधन होगा और आयोजन समिति के सभी सदस्यों को भी कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट करता हूँ कि आपने अच्छा विषय लिया है और खास करके हमारे जो पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं यहाँ जो पार्टिसिपेंट दिख रहे हैं उसमें कुछ एथलीट भी है कुछ खिलाड़ी भी है तो मुझे लगता है कि इस प्रकार के उद्बोधन चलते रहेंगे सेशन होते रहेंगे तो हमारे जो पार्टिसिपेंट है एथलीट है वे भी एजुकेटेड खास करके इस एंगल से होते रहेंगे थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच Thank you, Dr. Suri Vanchi and Dr. Kumkum, for the nice introduction, uh, and thank you, organizing committee, for uh, arranging a nice session for all uh, your department on and professors uh, on a very important topic on mental health, which is often ignored. And we are coming up with so many examples after Olympics as well, when uh, Simon Biles and uh, other players came out with mental health. so uh, sirf when we talk about mental health it is not only about athletes it is also about how parents feel with it and how coaches deal with it so with that on note i will uh, if you can see the screen so yes, i will start, please continue okay. i will cover the topic on how the support of parents is important to athletes Uh, during the pandemic and lockdown specifically when every tournament got cancelled and postponed so how the parents can support the young athletes so uh, in this lecture i will be covering the impact of covid-19 on sports how it impacted the whole sports community the parental support strategies for the young athletes and some major tips for all the parents and athletes watching this session so when we talk about covid-19 it has forced us most of us to be confined inside our homes since march 2020 so human history will record this period as a time of unparalleled separation and crisis but also of great courage learning and collaboration each one of us is having to review or rethink the way we function and the way of life itself in the past two years as we have seen across the world in multiple situations of crisis the children are the most vulnerable and the most worst affected Uh, during these situations so to fight covid-19 the country is under the lockdown which went on for a very long time to contain the spread of the pandemic everyone in the sports community has felt the impact of this pandemic and the events and the competitive seasons at all sports levels starting from domestic state nationals international as the olympics also got postponed by one year we got uh, affected the training facilities got closed athletes coaches parents organizations of the sports and the stakeholders they had to develop the contingency plans to deal with the current situation fortunately we do have mental health practitioners and organizations which are helping to mitigate the effects of this extremely fluid situation through online support so as covid-19 pandemic continues to expand in india and in the world with different waves coming up only one thing one thing is certain that the current outbreak will have profound impact not only in the health and economic situation but also on the psychosocial well-being of societies across nations the impacts will be felt differently among different population groups among these as we mentioned children are the most vulnerable ones to get the effect so uh, children have in the current context of lockdown and the restriction of movements children have constrained access to socialization playing and even physical contact which is very critical for their psychosocial wellbeing and development 
the school got the schools got closed the colleges got closed which are preventing children from access to learning and limiting their interactions with their peers and friends so children may feel confused and at loss with the current situation which might lead to more frustration and anxiety which will only increase with the over exposure to the social media and mass media we have especially among the adolescent age group so uh, so when this frustration is there uh, we need to work on uh, understanding the emotions of the athletes covid-19 is also bringing new stressors on parents and caregivers which can hamper their capacity to provide care and remain engaged with their children being very keen observers of people and environment especially the children will notice absorb and react to the stress in their caregivers and community members which unavoidably will affect their well-being since the lockdown and the subsequent emergence from lockdown the young athletes has been forced to significantly change their training patterns with the uh, cancellation of formal training sessions and reintegration with social distancing norms throughout this time the competitive sport was suspended and in the transition phase it is still unclear when all competitions will commence back as normal so these changes for some can lead to feelings of frustration uncertainty and anxiety so therefore uh, psycho education of parents and caregivers to support their children and young athletes in these difficult times and build their resilience is imperative so this lecture aims at providing parents and caregivers the psychological guidance to maintaining their own well-being and support their children in their return to competitive sport so uh, this has been the major impact on the sports community so i will be talking about three major priorities for all the parents to look at when they are working with the young athletes one is how the self management can be done for the parents and caretakers themselves secondly i'll cover i'll go to how we can navigate the level of uncertainty created by the current situation and uh, thirdly uh, how do we deal with the motivation levels of athletes playing their sport at the current level and how we can enhance that motivation through goal setting so when we talk about self management the first thing uh, as parents and caretakers of young athletes you are no doubt having to navigate the additional and varied roles so some of you might be working from home and uh, it might have brought another responsibility apart from uh, what you actually do in the normal lifestyle so you might be supporting your family you might be working from home you might be planning to return to work or you might be helping your child's home learning or you might be facilitating online meeting up opportunities for your children so you might also be helping them to cope with not being able to participate in their usual training and competitive schedules at this time it is important to consider the ways in which you can manage your own psychological self care and continue to support your child throughout these extraordinary times so when we talk about being a positive role model it is very important on what behaviors you depict to your kid because it is very well documented in research that behaviors and perceptions exhibited by parents will likely to influence your child's behaviors so when you are following government guidelines and staying updated with information on restrictions and any changes to these is the first step to follow so that also shows the kid that what are the things which are important to follow responding positively to changes being made from the sports organizations or governing body to avoid creating negativity and helping develop a plan to implement the changes and decisions made is a major role you play as parents these changes are different across the various regions of the world based on the sport and guidance in some areas are also regarded for only the elite athletes so it is important to be updated on what the government guidelines are and what are the guidelines followed by each sport specifically so being a positive role model is the first step for your kids when we talk about self care when we talk about self uh there are certain things which you need to do for managing and being aware of your own emotions 
So what, how you can do that is by identifying how you're feeling, recognizing your early signs of feeling pressure and what particular stressors are triggering those. So helping athletes and coaches uh, to develop a range of self-management skills will only come when you can manage your own emotions. Another thing you can do is take care of your basics like nutrition, staying hydrated and sleep. Eating healthy, balanced and nutritious meals is fundamental to well-being. Feeling hydrated, feeling dehydrated will negatively impact on your daily energy levels. So remember that if you only drink when feeling thirsty, you might have perhaps left it an hour too late to hydrate yourself. So regarding sleep, you need to maintain a routine and try to wake up and going to sleep at approximately the same time each day. It is also helpful to prepare for sleep. So it is important to switch off from what you were doing at least one hour before sleep time, which would benefit in getting you a sound sleep. So if you are struggling to sleep, it is also helpful to monitor the caffeine and alcohol intake as these are both known stimulants for sleep disturbance. Another thing which you can look at is developing a routine and structure to your day. If you are working from home, continue to manage your time and learn what daily structure is more effective for you. It will be helpful to prioritize your goals, identify the stepping stone, tasks needed to achieve uh, those certain goals and develop a ritual that enables you to know that your day has started and ended. Because in the work from home situation, we have all lost the track of time. And uh, I mean, we end up spending more on the video calls and meetings without knowing what the day looks like. So it is also important to monitor your online meetings and your screen time. It is recently recommended not to spend more than four hours during one day on video calls or meetings. Another important thing to look at is to take a break or take a time out. You will be getting a stream of information on COVID-19 on the news and social media. While it is important to stay updated, it is also important to know when to switch off. To do this, you can build your physical activity into your daily routine, this could also contribute to having some family time activities with your kids, practicing relaxation and using deep breathing to regain control and feeling more relaxed. There are a number of user-friendly apps that can help you with this like Calm or Headspace. So there are multiple apps available on the Play Store now and the App Store. And import, most importantly, and the last important point is to stay connected. So just like your kids, you also have friends and your own network. So it is important to continue to build your own support network during this time. You should stay in touch with your friends and family members from outside of your household while speaking within the government guidelines. And remember, virtual groups can also offer support. So uh, another important aspect to look on self-management for your kids, kid athletes and young athletes is keeping yourself informed. So this model, uh, it is important for parents to keep themselves updated of the changes and developments and thus enhancing the knowledge and understanding, which leads to positive outcomes in the sporting environment for young people. A known stressor is a lack of information. Not knowing what is going on, when and for what reason can create negative emotions, worry and feelings of uncertainty for all involved in, this, in supporting your children in their sporting endeavors. Using this model, this is called a core model principles, you can minimize this risk of lack of information and support the well-being of yourself and your child effectively. So when we talk about creating an information log, this may seem an odd thing to do, but now more than ever, with the amount of information we are receiving, it helps to be organized. You might create a folder on your phone, computer, or write it down on a paper. The point is to make a note of important information you receive and know where it is. Think how often you have been seen, you have seen something online and then you can't find it. So organizing all sporting information about what is happening in the sport, what tournaments are being cancelled and what are the guidelines followed by different countries, states in playing that tournament 
avoids any self doubt and reduces the uncertainty so creating an information log is an important thing to do for the kid as well uh having open channels of communication is uh like you have to stay in regular contact with the key personnel within uh, your child's sporting network depending on the sport and performance level this may include managers coaches or the national governing body this contact may be direct through personal phone calls and emails or indirect through regular update communications if you have questions do not be afraid to discuss your concerns with the personnel the key personnel of an athlete importantly when information is delivered in mass to all this might not fit with your personal circumstances so it is important to be prepared to ask questions or arrange a follow up phone call as required sometimes it helps to write a list of points you want to discuss only if you are informed and understand the plans you can support your child athlete in what they need to do so uh, nowadays we have so many sources of information where we don't know it's a reliable one or not so having reliable sources of information uh, is very important especially post covid 19 because we get so many updates on whatsapp and we forward it without knowing the source of the information so it's important to be aware of what sources your information is coming from because the messages might be distorted if you are getting in information that might not be useful so if you are unsure about something you have heard seen or read do not be afraid to ask the primary source of the information or most relevant person sometimes it is just one person asking that brings awareness of miscommunication and lastly the following the core principle effective communication with your children is important so we know then that these are the challenging times and it is important that when you have information about the sport you share it with your child whether the news is good or bad these may be difficult conversations but there are several things you can do to make the process easier like making time to have the conversations with your child limit other distractions and ensure that you have enough time to let them assimilate the news and ask questions so of course you have to manage your own emotions don't fall into the trap of saying i know how you feel or maybe i am disappointed as well give them space to share their feelings you should listen and support so ask them what they need now what do they want to do next do not assume what support is needed have the conversation and plan together so these are the important things about when Uh, which is the priority during uh, taking care of a uh, child athlete so next we move on to how we can navigate the uncertainty created due to the cancellation and postponement of the tournaments and the current situation of the lockdown so we have daily or weekly updates in the scheduling of events and this can vary across different regions of the world so with many events and competitions postponed indefinitely and no certain confirmation of when some will resume there is a likelihood of increased amounts of distress for your child who is playing so they will also have been isolated from their friends teammates for an extended period of time as the like as the lockdown reduces and they are also unable to engage in activities that repre represent their strongly valued identity as an athlete so this stress and loss of identity is likely to provoke negative emotions and perhaps low mood which are likely to have a detrimental impact on their well-being especially if they do not seek support or begin to take proactive measures to cope with it so the first step in managing your experience is to recognize how you feel covid-19 is impacting everyone differently and the impact it is having on you is completely normal and completely valid some common feelings experienced are fear uh, relief confusion anxiety disappointment exhaustion frustration and anger so in cities and towns and states across the globe mandates to stay home and socially distance may cause you to feel physically alone plenty of other people are feeling just like you and it is important to stay virtually connected acknowledge what you are feeling identify those emotions and work on trying to understand and accept them anticipate that your emotions will also likely to change over time as the covid pandemic evolves 
so when we talk about understanding your uh, kids emotional needs they may express psychological distress like anxiety or sadness or sadness by acting out in a very different way as each child behaves very differently some may become silent while others may feel and express anger and hyperactivity so caregivers need to be patient with children and understand their emotions all emotions expressed by kids are valid emotions and as parents and caregivers we need to understand understand them with empathy instead of dismissing it sometimes engaging in a creative or interactive activity such as like playing or drawing with them and playing games with them can facilitate this process of understanding their emotions so you should help children find positive ways to express their disturbing feelings such as anger fear and sadness uh you should also keep regular routines and schedules as much as possible so that the uncertainty is also reduced if children are witnessing violence at home or if they are the target of the violence it causes trauma and distress and may lead to disruptive behavior so avoid watching reading listening or discussing too much news about the covid-19 and persuade children to divert their attention to other topics as well if someone is sick in the family or a known person or relative have been taken to a hospital or if there has been a death or children may experience added anxiety and may need specialized help so talk to counselors in such cases the fear and stress caused by covid-19 may increase their sense of insecurity and cause even more serious mental health issues if not addressed in a timely manner another important thing to be considered while understanding the emotional needs of the athletes is this model of listening comforting and reassuring which helps athletes in dealing with stressful events so give children opportunities to talk about what they are feeling encourage them to share concerns and ask questions so listening actively listening is a very important first step to understand how they feel then we go on to comforting them so using simple tools to comfort for children for example telling them stories singing with them playing games and praising them uh, appreciating them frequently for their strengths such as showing courage compassion and helpfulness is a very strong way to build uh, the emotional uh, resilience of the kid and finally going to reassurance uh, children uh, you can reassure your children that you are prepared to keep them safe which helps them to be more uh, stronger emotionally provide them with the correct information through valid sources so a uh, youth athletes emotional responses to uncertainty are likely to be amplified due to their psychological stage of development so if it's a school child or going through a uh, adolescent stage or puberty it also depends on how their emotional responses are based on their stage of development so however these negative emotions are also a very normal and natural response to uncertainty therefore trying to dismiss or minimize your child's concerns too quickly may compound these feelings as they may feel that you know they are being they are not being heard therefore it is recommended that it is uh, before attempting to help your child practically deal with their concerns ensure that time has been spent listening to their worries first and uh, the most important thing and mantra we nowadays use with all the athletes is control the controllables uh, encourage your child and help your child to identify what sources of uncertainty are in their control for example exercising and training safely seeing opportunities for personal development and growth maintaining physical distancing but also maintaining social interactions and also help them identify what sources of uncertainty are outside of their control so like uh, when the sporting events will resume or when the so physical distancing restrictions will be reduced so these are all uncontrollables so uh, focusing on control the controllables mantra is what is needed to tell them that there are certain things which are in your control plan organize and deal with sources of uncertainty that are within your control another important thing for all the parents here uh, are the signs of psychological distress which signals uh, that the kids need support and help 
Some children may also face serious mental health issues due to the on ongoing pandemic. They may exhibit the following signs like difficulties in sleeping, eating, uh, feeling more withdrawn or aggressive, or they might have nightmares, or they might complain of pain in stomach or headache without any physical reason. Uh, or, my, or there might be new fears that manifest, like, uh, for example, the fear of dark, which was not there before, or more clinging and depending behaviors, having fears, being afraid to be left alone, or decreased interest in the playing sport, which they used to love, and engaging in playful activities. Uh, also, I mean, uh, which is more frequently seen as the kids are being sad, crying more than usual, or for no apparent reason. So that is a sign of worry to be reported and to be taken care of. For all the parents to recognize and respond to these emotional reactions and how to help your child cope with the uncertainty caused by COVID-19, they need to understand uh, based on their age and how they can explain based on their age appropriate information. So talk to children about what is happening in a way that they can understand. Keep it simple and appropriate for each child's age. Uh, as young athletes mature, it takes them time to develop a problem-focused coping strategy. Therefore, your child may need assistance in identifying which sources of uncertainty are in their control and which are not. Your child can then be supported to cope with these sources of uncertainty that are within their control. So, for example, practice Practical ways of helping your child cope with uncertainty could include helping them to plan their weekly training sessions, ensuring that they maintain regular contact with their coaches, or to help them organize and prioritize competing commitments like schoolwork, training sessions, competitions. So there are a few techniques which can be practiced by young athletes and guided by parents and caregivers to manage their child's emotional responses. Uh, your child can be encouraged to practice deep breathing uh, and engage in mindfulness or meditation or we can use uh, relaxing imagery, listening to music or developing a routine contact with family, friends, teammates or coaches and uh, the most frequently used is journaling where they can write their thoughts, feelings and worries down regularly. And uh, they can also physically train or exercise within the social distancing guidelines. And uh, they can take a walk in a green space where possible, which has been shown to reduce stress levels. Or they can do an activity uh, with the members of their household. So you can all go together, uh, cook together, bake together, or involve everyone uh, in the family to do an activity together. And uh, lastly, we'll move on to how to enhance the motivation uh, of the athletes during this time. So when we talk about motivation and goal setting, your child may have begun this year with a sense of sport purpose and clearly defined performance goals. In turn, you may have created your own plan of how to help them achieve this. The impact of COVID-19 and the cancellation and suspension of competitions in some training means that the goals they had may, not, may no longer be attainable, at least in the short term. This non-attainment of goals can lead to demotivation, a sense of loss, and lack of focus. So there are some ways to help alleviate some of these factors, like structuring your daily and alternative goals for well-being. So when we talk about uh, the goals for well-being, this, of course, you might have heard of this concept of smart goals. Without goals and the normal daily structure of training and uh, school, young people can lose focus and drift throughout the day, which in turn can impact their mental well-being. So using positive goal setting will not only provide structure, but can lead to a sense of accomplishment. Helping your young performer set goals should be a joint effort. Importantly, research has shown that ownership and investment in goal setting leads to positive attainment. To help your child and young athletes set goals, you can use the, this principle of smart goal setting concept, which means that the goal should be specific, measurable, attainable, recorded, and time-framed. So when we talk about specific, uh, discuss with your child athlete what they want to achieve and set as a target. 
when we talk about measurable ask how the target can be measured this will help with determining when it has been achieved goal should be challenging but must be realistic when setting goals in the current situation you should also factor in how they might change with the government guidelines this may relate to the impact of environmental con constraints for example space and equipment or team versus individual sports uh, they should also be recorded a goal setting chart where progress can be monitored and reviewed in is a useful way of maintaining motivation providing feedback and charting improvement and uh, lastly it should be time framed set a time frame for when the goal can be achieved and uh, help in reviewing it so i'll give you an example so if i if i set a goal as uh, i want to run so this doesn't have any of those five principles it just says i want to run uh, but how long i want to run when i want to run and what is my capability of running at the current moment is not defined here so if i change this to i want to run 5 kilometers that is more specific but what if i run 5 kilometers every day that's not challenging for me then or what if i run 20, 21 kilometers so 5k is not a challenge or a goal for me so if i specify based on the realistic base of what i really do right now and where what i want to achieve from it i need to have a time frame to it so if i say i want to run 5 kilometers in 28 minutes by 15 september 2021 that defines a goal for me which is uh, achievable uh, specific measurable realistic and time framed for me so this way it helps me structure myself and help me plan and structure in what i really want to do so uh, another thing is goals can not only be set in terms of what you want to achieve in your performance there are goals which can be set apart from that on physical well being for example your sleeping patterns or your nutrition or your exercise to name a few or personal development such as learning a new skill or fitness work for improvement in sport so this chart is an example of different type of goals set in uh, for an athlete or a young person looking for some structure and motivation family goals can also be uh, determined such as exercise and physical activity together or enhancing psychological skills training like uh, want to work on your self talk concentration imagery so developing a balance between school work family time sport and leisure activities it helps in all of this so goal setting is a very powerful tool for uh, structuring your kids uh, in terms of having a routine and having a goal so there are a few child like uh, helpline numbers where where you can uh, reach out to the people um, for help so we have helpline 1098 uh, the national helpline which is also covid 19 helpline uh, 1075 and there's a new uh, mental health helpline for athletes announced by the ioc it will be soon coming out after the olympics they had announced this and the women's helpline is 1091 so before winding up i also give up uh, some tips for parents and athletes for athletes it is important to talk out so please identify uh, your kids people whom they trust and whom they feel more comfortable uh, where they can be the sources of support and guidance during this time of lockdown and pandemic stay in, let them stay in touch with their coaches teammates uh, through texts video calls and social media also you can connect to a mental health pro performance professional for additional support in working through your current experience and concerns the athletes can be considered on how they want to continue to engage in their sport with the current limitations and uh, they should you should also um, make them remember their why that even with no no competition on the horizon reflecting remembering and recommitting to why or reason for training and competing in their sport can help them to remain positive and motivated and focusing on their physical and mental fitness is something which they can work on during the pandemic and with the limitations around so if they decide to continue investing in their training it may be easier to continue improving their uh, flexibility strength mentality and other areas during this time 
So they should ask their coach, athletic trainer, or strength and conditioning coach what they can physically do or explore through virtual training options, through various apps and programs. Uh, as Garmin, Strava, Map My Run, there are a few apps to name. They can also improve their mental skills such as confidence, focus, goal setting, relaxation, or visualization by finding sports psychology professional to work with on a one-to-one -one basis or by using an app such as Headspace, Calm, Fit Brains. And uh, they should also establish a daily routine where they can have a decent control over the conditions uh, they make about how they start and end their day as well as, well as in terms of prioritizing their daily and, weekly, uh, daily and weekly schedules. So morning and evening routines, getting enough sleep, incorporating others, acts of self-care, journaling, engaging in personal hobbies, eating nutritious food. It can help their lives to partially re-establish feelings of control and comfort while supporting their health and well-being. And for the parents, all the parents here, it is important to maintain awareness and initiate action. So you should utilize the COVID-19 updates to determine how the pandemic will continue to impact you and your family. You should respect and support the decisions made by various governing bodies about sport and performance events that align with the current COVID recommendations. As new information or changes arise, use that as an opportunity to initiate or continue conversations with your family about facts, expectations, and feelings. And of course, be a positive role model, no matter how your children are. No matter no matter how young or old your children are, they will likely look up to you to determine how to respond under these circumstances. So this is an opportunity to show them how to productively express emotions while managing stress and uncertainty. Show them resilience rather than panic and despair. Help your children keep the pandemic in perspective instead of fueling any negative emotions over specific decisions and updates. Be open and available to talk to, listen, support your children. Be all in during these moments to help them feel valued and heard. And encourage self-care, creativity, and meaning making. So of course, we talked about self-care in the previous slides. Check with your children about where they need dedicated support from you in helping with planning, scheduling, training, or uh, outside of distance learning, and perhaps uh, guide them with their coach. Uh, they might have a lot of extra time on their hands uh, with the virtual uh, platform. It's important to help them find productivity, positivity, and meaningful ways to spend that time rather than logging hours and hours of screen time. So you could help brainstorm alternative ways to engage in hobbies or activities, provide suggestions for self-care, or offer to help them stay active by playing games or working or working on any, say, for example, basketball dribbling skills or uh, ball practice in badminton. Staying busy helps them avoid focusing all their attention on negative ramifications of the pandemic. Or such as event cancellations, school closures, or social isolation. Not being able to compete could be a potential identity crisis for some athletes. While it is important to let your children process such feelings, if this is what they are experiencing, helping them find ways to be productive and taking care of themselves physically and mentally can help ease the pain and confusion they might be feeling. And of course, take care of yourself to establish your own self-care routine so that you're able to effectively manage stress and regulate your emotions while you're also supporting your family. Virtually stay in touch with other parents, particularly the ones who have children with similar ages or parents from your teams to support each other, as your feelings and, pro uh, and you can resolve your problems based on that. And uh, second, and uh, lastly, reach out for help if needed. If your child is struggling and would benefit from additional support, look out to your local community for resource recommendations. You may also consider searching for a mental health professional who can provide online services during this stressful period. And uh, the most important mantra of the whole session is control the controllables. 
in this time of uncertainty focus on what you can control even when it feels as if there is little you can control utilize your networks and these tips to make it one day at a time as we keep moving forward remember that kindness is always free and we will get through this by supporting each other always be kind as everyone is fighting a hard battle so this is what i would cover uh, as a professional of sports psychology for all the parents out here and i hope this session was useful in some way uh, i would hand over my mic to the organizing committee now and any questions if you all have please feel free to ask thank you madam thank you datta sir ye mai hello 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 हेलो 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 यस सर वी कैन हियर यू Hello. There was an issue with the uh, network from my side. Hello. Yes, I think there is some uh, technical issue. Uh, we'll be joined by the class are soon. Hello. There are many appreciation posts, Sanskriti Madam, in the chat box. People feel that this. uh it's it was a very informative uh, session thank you ma'am uh, yes uh, there is there is um, one uh, kind of a question uh, somebody has posted it uh, okay. sometimes children shout without much reason and they feel irritated i think especially in the uh, in the pandemic era perhaps uh, so uh, there is no question as such but if there can be a commentary from your side on this so uh, this is what i was mentioning about understanding the emotional needs of the kid because uh, i mean i need to know the context and background because there has been a lot of behavioral changes uh, reported especially during uh, this lockdown phase and uh, the prolonged phase of no schools and uh, i mean no participation physically so, yes it has to be in context with what the going through in terms of comment on that okay, so, so. and yes there are age appropriate recommendations based on 
every kid's age because a 6 year old would be different from a 13 year old which i will be i mean i'll cover in detail next time okay thank you so much ma'am uh, there is another question how useful was the role played by the media especially social media during the covid 19 pandemic sports karna. shutdown and isolation period uh, to parents uh so yes the social media role uh, could have played a negative and a positive impact both because the information received was in bulk and uh, as i said we didn't know what reliable information we were seeking uh, there was so much information and right now also we need to like we have sources now how to verify the joint cables so yes it did have an uh, negative impact on some kids based on what information they were receiving and yes it is also important to update them with the current scenario so that information plays a vital role as well in updating them but too much information only on covid and no other activity might impact negatively uh ma'am one more question about primary class children how to make them busy without being bored so there are a list of activities and uh, since i mean as people are working from home and looking at the indian scenario uh, the people i mean the parents who are working both of them who are working can't engage with the kids and kids don't have their peers at the moment for because they are not going to school and they are just uh, with the online classes so engaging them with household activities where all of you are involved is a minor step to take to remove and to reduce their boredom in the current scenario thank you so much ma'am uh, over to uh, tapan datta sir okay Oh. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, any I query? Uh, so we have taken up questions. We can move on now. Okay. Should yeah, I add Surya Vanshi, sir? You also? can move on. Uh, yes. For his inputs. um uh, yeah you can add suryavanshi sir for its inputs and um, there is a net issue from side that i am extremely sorry and i congratulate uh, sanskriti shabra ma'am for giving us such a wonderful deliberation i and i hope though we are from the field of physical education we are parents too and uh, how we have kids as far as uh, during this pandemic era is concerned we are much clear now and uh, definitely it will be helpful to us to nurture our children thank you madam for accepting our invitation and i hope so you we will definitely seek your cooperation in future also thank you madam you can join sir surya vanshi sir for his inputs thank you sir for inviting me as a resource person for your econ and it's a very good initiative especially focusing on the mental health right we invite dr sarath suramanchi sir to sum this up uh kaafi acha sanskruti ji ne abhi vishay ko hum sabhi ke sath share kiya sanskruti ji aapne jo presentation ke dwara samjhaya sabhi ko क्योंकि यहाँ पर जो पार्टिसिपेंट्स है वे स्कूल और कॉलेज दोनों से बिलोंग्स करते हैं और आपने जो विषय को जिस तरह से रखा वो काफी महत्वपूर्ण था काफी आसान तरीके से आपने इस विषय को समझाया खास करके आपने एक बात कही जो मैं आपकी बात को दोहराना चाहूंगा जिसमें आपने सेल्फ मैनेजमेंट सेल्फ केयर की बात कही थी तो हमारे जो पार्टिसिपेंट खास करके ओलम्पिक्स में गए थे अभी तो काफी विषय इस विषय को लेकर चर्चा हुई कि हम लोग खुद का मैनेजमेंट नहीं कर पाए हालांकि हमने देखे कुछ हमारे जो एथलीट है खास करके दीपिका कुमारी जी जो वर्ल्ड चैंपियन है करंट में वर्ल्ड चैंपियन है ओलंपिक्स के पहले जो रैंकिंग डिसाइड हुई थी उसमें भी नंबर वन पे थी परंतु वो परफॉर्म नहीं कर पाई हमारे तीरंदाज नहीं कर पाए बाकी भी तीरंदाज नहीं कर पाए शूटिंग में भी सेम बात हुई है इवन रेसलिंग में भी हमारा यही हुआ है तो हम लोग 
वर्ल्ड स्टैंडर्ड के है वर्ल्ड लेवल के है परंतु जो कुछ चीजें हमारे छुट्टी थी या किन चीजों के कारण हम लोग पीछे रह गए तो मुझे लगता है कि आपने जो आज विषय रखा है सेल्फ मैनेजमेंट सेल्फ केयर आपने जो कहा है आपने काफी डिटेल्स में किया है पर मैं इन दो बातों को खास करके गौर किया और ये मुझे लगता है कि काफी महत्वपूर्ण है जो पार्टिसिपेंट से वे भी इस बात से मेरे से सहमत होंगे क्योंकि खुद का मैनेजमेंट तो करना ही है हम वर्ल्ड चैंपियन है परंतु आने वाली परिस्थितियों को किस प्रकार से डालना है क्योंकि हम अलग परिस्थिति से आए और देशों के भी लोग हमारे सिचुएशन से आए थे यानी उनके लिए भी ये सारी चीजें नहीं थी पैंडेमिक के बाद एकदम से टूर्नामेंट में पार्टिसिपेट करना वो भी वर्ल्ड लेवल पे डायरेक्टली ये तो हमारे लिए जैसा था बाकी लोगों के लिए ऐसा था पर बाकी लोगों में बाकी जो पार्टिसिपेंट जो जिन्होंने मेडल्स हासिल किए उन्होंने सेल्फ मैनेजमेंट सेल्फ केयर इस बात को समझा ऐसा मुझे लगता है और हम इसमें कहीं कम पड़े हैं ऐसा मेरा खुद का एनालिसिस है वो काफी बड़े एथलीट है फिर भी एज अ फिजिकल एजुकेशन टीचर हमारा जो एक विश्लेषण करना चाहिए एनालिसिस करना चाहिए ऐसा मुझे लगता है परंतु यही बात मैं उल्टी कहना चाहूंगा नीरज चोपड़ा के मेडल के बारे में हालांकि नीरज चोपड़ा के साथ जब नीरज चोपड़ा का जब ओलंपिक्स का मेडल के लिए प्रोस्पेक्ट था उसमें वो खूब हुआ तो ब्रॉन्ज मेडल लेंगे ऐसा था फिर भी हम लोग श्योर नहीं थे आ, मैं स्वयं एथलेटिक फेडरेशन और चीजों में तालुकात रखता हूँ परंतु सेकंड और थर्ड प्लेस पे आए जो है यानी जो जिन्होंने सिल्वर और ब्रॉन्ज मिला है वे दोनों लोग अपना बेस्ट परफॉर्म वहां दे नहीं पाए बेस्ट परफॉर्मेंस दे नहीं पाए हालांकि वो नीरज से बेटर परंतु नीरज ने अपना जो रेगुलर परफॉर्मेंस है इंटरनेशनल लेवल का वो वहां पर बराबर परफॉर्म किए इसका मतलब उन्होंने सेल्फ मैनेजमेंट सेल्फ केयर आपने जो बात कही है इन चीजों की तरफ बराबर ध्यान दिया उसका बराबर अध्ययन या जिस प्रकार से उन्होंने खुद का शेड्यूलिंग करना चाहिए उस प्रकार से किया और वो मेडल में उन्होंने अपने परफॉर्मेंस को कन्वर्ट किया तो आपने बड़ी अच्छी तरह से बात समझाई है आप participants still uh, please stay connected hello hello aa beta yes uh, audible audible uh, yes yes sir you are audible uh, हेलो आवाज येतो मॅडम यस सर चौधरी सर यू आर ऑडिबल प्लीज कंटिन्यू ओके गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर संजय चौधरी इज अ इट इज माय ग्रेट प्लेजर टू इंट्रोड्यूस आवर रिसोर्स पर्सन एंड चेयर पर्सन ऑफ टुडेज फंक्शन टू दिस ऑगस्ट गॅदरिंग इज अ प्लेजर टू हैव 
you with us our dignitaries of the physical education and sports dr lalit sharma and dr avinash asnare sir today's chairperson dr avinash asnare sir director of sports and physical education santa gadge baba amravati university amravati he has done his bcom mped ma pgt hrm mphil phd net nis and emba he has represented uh, santa gadge baba university amravati is inter university tournament he has also represented in archery at state and national level he also represented santa gadge baba amravati university in all, all india university youth festival he has organized many national and inter in, inter university tournaments he has participated in many conference conference and workshop he has been a keynote speaker in various conference conference thank you sir today's resource person dr lalit sharma he is a, is an associate professor at indira gandhi university institute of physical education and sport science delhi university delhi he has a teacher a teaching experience of over 32 years he has done his bachelor of physical education lna lncp golier master of physical education lncp golier mphil at lncp phd jivaji university pg diploma in guidance and counseling andamala university msc in applied psychology andamala university he has represented in gymnastic four time at jivaji university golier he has published 10 books on gymnastic physical education he has been awarded a merit scholarship in lncp golier he has a coaching experience in gymnastic at university inter university in 2002 and 2007 he has worked in various committees delhi university he has been a resource person in various conferences i request you sir to kindly start the lecture thank you very much sanjay sir uh, for uh, introducing me in a very big manner though i am your friend and i am very happy to see steven also uh, steven welcome uh, then <laughs> and nice to hear you also your friend uh, um, most respectfully dr tapan datta the principal of the college all distinguished guest <clears throat> see um, today's uh, lecture i know that i have 32 uh, 35 minutes here to talk about and uh, uh, is it visible should i share my screen is it there or it also works right side of here yes sir it is visible okay inga da maar yes sir thank you dear see lp So if we can make it full screen, yeah, I make it. Just wait. Okay. Hope now it is visible on the full screen. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. See, uh, the topic which is being allotted to me is the challenges for athletes and the coaches for returning to group training. But before uh, talking about the athletes and the coaches challenges uh, let me share our challenges which we were facing for last two years in teaching the physical education to the students uh, my dear friends I, i would say that though we have faced more of challenges for last two year till this covid has come but we have taken it as an opportunity also because we have improved a lot before this covid we have never we were not interested or we have not taken so much of online training or so much of online lecture where we have exchanged our view through the thing so it's a challenge but at the same time it's an opportunity to learn new things also but for athletes or the for sports it's a really big challenge uh, i think 
all the challenges talking about all the challenges or the possible challenges is not possible within the stipulated time so i have selected only few things out of the many challenges which we face and you all aware because i know that there are many sports person those who are dealing with the uh, sports here that we know that there are certain factors which are responsible for the performances and out of many there are four things which i have highlighted here one is the personality second is physical characteristics third is the technique and the fourth factors now why personality i have taken here this see you all know that the personality talks about different attributes but i will take the different perspective into it because if you try to understand the behavior in a mathematical calculation then you will come to know that the behavior is is equal to p into e and the p is the personality attributes and e is the environment so whatever attributes we may have as an individual or whatever attributes you are player you may develop in an individual the true test of that attribute is that how under the given circumstances you are able to interact with that given environment your attributes whatever personality attributes you have are you able to interact with the environment efficiently or not or for your benefit or not that is the basic thing is now sports provide us such an environment where we flourish our personality where we develop our personality in a different different manner and i have been to sports many of you are being to sports and you know that whatever personality we have today or whatever attributes we have today the large number or the large percentage goes to the sports background because it has taught us many things it has taught us many things the basic fundamental psychology was talked about my previous uh, resource person ms sanskriti and she has very beautifully explained all the uh, basic about the psychology and how an individual can improve but my concern here is i am limiting myself to the specific to the sports situation that how and what sports environment provide us to develop that so there are a few things which i want to discuss with here is that the psychological stable now as you all know that it is not only the performance which matter in sports i would say it is each and every training session matter for a player each and every training session because that teaches you failure that teaches you success you know how to enjoy your success you know how to deal with your failure you know how to respond to your failure you know how to interact with your peer group you know how to respond to your coach so by every day engaging at least twice in a day in a two session you get ample opportunity to test your attributes under the given circumstances so every day you get an opportunity every time you get an opportunity to interact and i think for last one and a half, for last 18 months this is missing from the sportsman life we cannot perform any sportsman cannot perform in vacuum it is not possible for us to perform in a vacuum and therefore when we say the psychological stable that how consistent you are with your behavior how consistent you are uh, with your interacting with the environment with your failure and your success failure and success are the outcome i not talk about much about that but uh, my concern is your response to that failure and success that is more important how do you take it how do you respond to it then being a responsible player or being a responsible citizen being a responsible uh, member of the team you know your responsibility that because 
you have to play a very specific role when you are playing in a team you are not an individual you have to dissolve your individuality to some extent you have to sacrifice your individual goal for the sake of the team goal i think this is lacking for last 18 months so it makes us responsible we have to sacrifice we have to forget our uh, individual goal or at least not forget we can keep that individual goal on the back side and our team goal are more important for me the team meaning is more important than uh, how many score i score or how many goal i score in that, that particular team that is what i think that the sports teaches us a lot and by doing so the self confidence because uh, accomplishment or your success there is nothing succeed like success it inculcates it boosts your self confidence also when you are uh, when you are helping your teammate that boosts your relationship when you are when you are able to score a goal that it boosts your confidence and the most important part in the personality is the independence i have written i would say it is the interdependence and why i am insisting on the interdependence is because each and every player in a sport is important and your success also depends on your teammate success so apart from this there are two things more that is the decisiveness the decision making ability and uh, slightly going into the detail of the decision making ability there are uh, one thing is the executive functions are there that how do you recall the things how do you visualize the things how do you perceive the things and the feel of the ball in that feel of the ball is also we are talking about the the, the perception of the ball we are talking about this perception i will talk at the later part of this lecture in a more detail because that is the whole concern of this today's talk about the pages but as far as uh, this personality is concerned as far as the, this personality i am talking about my more uh, emphasis and what i want to discuss here is that when we interact under the given circumstances then we grow as an attribute so having an attribute is one thing but under any given circumstances tan says how do you interact with that how what you how you learn to interact with that environment that is how we develop as a person that is how we develop as a as an individual and as a player and the second part which talks about the technique and there are uh, there are certain skills which are acquired by the psychological principle of learning and these are the feeling perception images thought and memory process as i said just now that we are i am talking about the executive functions executive functions talks about your memory the executive functions talks about your recalling of the skill executive functions also talks about that how how, how you are able to perceive the things how you are able to create an image of the particular things of your thing how your thought process moves and when our thought process moves it is not only the selection of these stimuluses but also it is then its attentive selection of the things where you are uh, paying attention to what you choose from the environment that is also an important so therefore an open environment is required to to develop all these skills and i think for a player or for a coach this is the biggest challenge which we are facing now we are not exposed to many stimuluses in the environment we have very limited stimuluses and that too and like suppose i am now taking lecture aur jo sabse bada uh, jo mujhe uh, online teaching mein jo sabse bada mere ko mehsoos hota hai as an individual ki jab hum classroom mein padhate the then i can understand through the eyes of the student that what they are feeling about the lecture what they are feeling about the class so that is missing somehow here i'm as if we are talking to a screen as if we are talking to a, a just plain wall because the instant feedback we are not getting 
and that is also a drawback for the coaches also for the player also and that applies to ourselves also what or who's our we are in the teaching profession so what the feeling you are having that is also missing your perception is a challenging it becomes more challenging because of your you are not able to be attentive to your your attention selection is missing some your thought process is very much limited you are you are not able to recall the things as it is desired so this technique is what we are talking about and in practice i would say that skill can be acquired unconsciously oh you may be uh, disagree with me on this point but i say that the skill can be acquired unconsciously now learning of the skill at the very starting is a conscious effort where you are all your attention is on the learning of things but as you practice it as you practice more and more and more and moving from learning to the perfection it become unconscious you learn to that and through athletic experiences which you acquire and now the interesting thing here is that whenever a player goes to a field he is or he is having an individual personal athletic experiences they are not common my experiences are different your experiences are different and there are certain psychological component which has direct influence on your skill learning that is the knowledge what you acquire through the different resources the memory not only memory it is the recalling of the memory the how swiftly how quickly you can recall from your memory drum and the ability to switch operations from different particular situations that is also an important aspect and the social psychological aspect is a biggest challenge which both coach is facing and the player are facing and i would say there are three things which are very very critical one is the team interaction another is the cooperation and the third is the communication my dear friends all those who have been involved in a sports for a longer period of time they must be knowing that they understand their teammate or the peer group body language that what exactly they want without uttering a word without shouting a word they can understand what my peer group is talking about what my peer group wants and cooperation is a learned behavior we learn to cooperate we are competitive by nature but we learn to cooperate and when i am saying so then we learn to to sacrifice to compromise our own individual goal for the sake of the team that cooperation is required because in any move in a sports any move in a sports is a is a cooperation within the players no single player can take the ball and can shoot in the goal it is a collective work it is a team work and you you should know that how far you have to go with the team work is and the team interaction we learn we learn to jealous jealousy with our teammate but at the same time we also learn to handle that jealousy we are being competitive with our teammate but at the same time when we are playing for a common cause then we forget about that competitiveness and we collectively learn to say and now दोस्तों ये जो बात है ना देर आर सर्टेन थिंग्स विच यू एज ए प्लेयर कैन फील दैट इट इज मोर ऑफ एन वेन यू इंट्रैक्ट वेन यू कम यू डू नॉट नो दैट ऑन वट पॉइंट यू हैव सेक्रीफाइस यूर इंडिविजुअल गोल फॉर दिस एक ऑफ द टीम गोल कभी कभी हमें पता भी नहीं चलता कभी कभी हमें यही नहीं पता चलता कि हमने अपना इंडिविजुअल गोल कब छोड़ दिया और हम टीम गोल के लिए हमने अपना अपने को अपना इंडिविजुअल गोल को सेक्रीफाइस कर दिया और ये चैलेंज हमारे सामने हमेशा से रहता है एंड वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग एंड 
this is the uh, main part i would say of this total lecture now i am restricting myself to only one thing that is the motor perception it is slightly technical part of this sport psychology and this total part is missing in this online teaching i would say uh, isse pehle main aapko ek cheez zarur share karna chahunga 2008 में मैंने सोचा था कि हम एक ऑनलाइन फिजिकल एजुकेशन चलाए हमने इग्नू को अप्रोच भी करा कहीं ना कहीं हम खुद एज एन इंडिविजुअल हम इस बात से कन्विंस नहीं थे कि फिजिकल एजुकेशन ऑनलाइन हो भी सकता है या नहीं लेकिन हमने उसके बाद भी अप्रोच करा क्योंकि दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी में काम करने के लिए लोगों के एक डिफरेंट तो हमने भी उस चीज को ट्राई किया और लोगों का क्वेश्चन यही था कि आप फिजिकल एजुकेशन इज द एजुकेशन थ्रू फिजिकल मूवमेंट हाउ विदाउट प्रैक्टिकल विदाउट इन्वॉल्विंग इन दैट स्पोर्ट्स यू कैन गेट द ऑनलाइन टीचिंग दैट टाइम वी कुड नॉट आंसर इट बट नाउ यू सी आप 18 महीने से जो मैं बिल्कुल भी टेक, जो टेक्नोलॉजी से भी नहीं हूं मैं भी फिर भी ये काम करने लगा I have also learned a lot in this, and at least I can manage the class. That much I have learned. Or ab mujhe ye bahut strongly lagta hai ki now physical education should move, the sport should move to one step ahead, where you are preparing your online lessons for five to eight minutes, one skill, the skill learning also. I know that this online teaching cannot completely replace. the face to face teaching that should not because there are certain challenges also and those challenges i am talking about regarding only one topic that is the perception or the motor perception i am talking about this motor perception required a on field experiences why because of the space shell character the perception of the special character of the teammate now why it is required special character of the teammate why it is required now suppose when you are going for a batting and the bowler has bowled you one ball if you do not have the special clear cut perception of the special character of the opponent that where they are standing you cannot choose to make your shot because you may be caught or you may be fielded by your opponent and you are not going to get the run similarly when you are playing a team game when we are playing a basketball hockey football any game where exactly you have to pass the amount of strength which you have to apply to the ball so that your ball should accurately reach to the partner where you want to send that ball and not beyond that part how much uh, how much efforts are to be put in how much force is to be applied the clear cut perception of the special character of the team and opponent is required to understand then you are ball object and you are playing field also so when we are saying the special characteristics of and this time is this is lacking in our online teaching the player are also facing a big challenge in understanding that special characteristics of the team game that accurate judgment of the player distance is very difficult to get from the online teaching the second is the distance between the teammates opponent now your success of passing the ball through the player depends on the force which you have applied and whether your opponent can reach to the ball or can intercept the ball or not will depend on how accurately you have perceived the distance between the two players now friends this is the challenge which i think and this is a very much training is required in the in setting the motor perception into order 
that how you can because uh, it comes through practice it comes through training on the field then you understand you judge the distance between the player and then you apply the force to pass in between so that your opponent cannot catch in between cannot intercept that ball in between and at the same time you also judge the perception of your own positions related to your teammates related to your opponent related to the ball related to the goal object in the playing field now how accurately you perceive these distances and the, these spaces in relation to your own position that where you are standing whether you have to take a shot whether you have to apply a shot whether you have to pass on that ball to the other person whether you and to which person aap अपनी बॉल किस टीममेट को पास करोगे किस ओपोनेंट को पास करोगे यदि आपने एक गलत टीममेट को पास कर दी जिससे कि ओपोनेंट ने इंटरसेप्ट कर लिया तो आपके अफेक्ट फ्यूटाइल हो गए तो आपको यह भी जज करना है कि कौन सा टीममेट मेरा सबसे बेहतर कंडीशन में है जिसको मैं अपनी बॉल भेज सकता हूं और वो बॉल को इंटरसेप्ट कोई ओपोनेंट नहीं करेगा and now all these things where you are perceiving your own positions related to the teammate opponent ball goal object is within the fraction of second and now see that how how accuracy is required to perceive and the how cognition is required to work how effectively you have to select the stimuluses from the environment how quickly you have to select the stimuluses from the environment now players may be learning the skill but that skill you never get you never play you never compete in isolation and whatever amount of practice you make the actual situation of the competition is always different from your practice situation all those who play they will agree with me that whatever amount of practice you may perform but the actual situation of that competition will be totally different and that is what the perception of the own movement is like the speed acceleration direction frequency that how much speed is required to reach a particular distance now that distance is i am talking about of your teammate distance i am talking about the distance from your opponent i am talking about the distance from the goal object and it is not always that when you are perceiving your own positions only or you are concerned about your own movements only we are also equally concerned about the perception of other movements also when i am saying the perception of the other movement also then the motor perception of the teammates with and without ball the type of movement what they are making the direction the speed and the acceleration duration and the sequence and the frequency so these are so many things which you all together interact when you are participating in a sports and when you are participating on the field then the perception of the movement of the ball and the perception of the movement of the ball is that when you are understanding the movement of the ball itself now it is said the type of the ball movement also when you are uh, perceiving the movement of a cricket ball or when you are perceiving the movement of a basketball when you are perceiving the movement of a football when you are perceiving the movement of a baseball every differ it differs from one sports to another sports from one place to another sports and that is what is important for all of us to understand and my dear friends ye jo motor perception wala कॉन्सेप्ट है ये सिर्फ एक बात मैं चैलेंज की बात कर रहा हूं क्योंकि मुझे पता है कि स्पोर्ट्स के अंदर बहुत सारी सिचुएशंस होती हैं और बहुत सारी सिचुएशन को 
विद इन थर्टी फोर्टी मिनट कवर करना पॉसिबल नहीं है और इसीलिए मैं सिर्फ एक बात कर आपके साथ डिस्कस करना चाह रहा था सिर्फ एक साथ आपके साथ शेयर करना चाह रहा था कि जो मुझे लगता है कि हमारा प्लेयर को सबसे बड़ा डिसएडवांटेज हुआ है इस कोविड में उसने अपने ये सारे मूवमेंट को नहीं सीखा यू मे आर्ग्यू दैट द थ्रू सिमुलेशन इज प्रैक्टिसिंग यू मे आर्ग्यू इज प्रैक्टिसिंग ऑफ इज ओन बट Uh, try to understand the actual situation of the competition try to understand the actual texture of the field where the movement and more moreover you may be aware of the thing is that in a sports where it is a open movements the open skills type of sports are there where environment has a lot to play its role whatever amount of training you take whatever amount of practice you perform but when you go to the competition the opponent force you to play in different way and immediately you have to adopt that situation now whatever practice of the ball movement speed acceleration direction you may perform during the practice hours if opponent is smart enough he can change your direction also he can change your speed also he can change your acceleration also by simply changing his movement or by forcing you to change your movement also so when we are saying it is the motor perception of the variable is a combination between the teammate opponent and the ball aur ye jo interaction hai teammate ka opponent ka aur ball ka ये एक साथ भी आपने देखना है ये लीगल ये आपने ईगल आई व्यू से भी देखना है यू कॉन्ट सी दिस थिंग सेपरेटली यू कॉन्ट एनालाइज यू कॉन्ट परसीव योर टीम मेट सेपरेटली देन योर ओपोनेंट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द पोजीशन ऑफ योर टीम मेट इन रिलेशन टू योर ओपोनेंट एंड आई थिंक कमिंग टू द एंड पार्ट ऑफ इट इज that for the coaches this is also a challenge but at the same time i would say the communication is the biggest challenge between the coach and the players through communication you understand many things through communication you you understand uh, your views and when you are talking about this uh, it has to be understand thank you very much hope i have uh, finished within the stipulated time hello uh, ah, sir yes, there sir. is a question by our uh, keynote addressee steven christensen sir he has asked us uh, what is your view on the covid impact on the development of motor skill and motor perception in youth sport and physical education uh, school just a second and university classes compared to what was achieved by coaches teachers and lecturers lecturers in the pre covid era in the pre covid era i think this uh, this is written somewhere uh, yes in the chat box sir okay okay so it is a kind of a comparative uh, question he is asking the pre and the post covid era impact on the development of motor skill and motor perception in youth sport and physical education school and university classes compared to what was achieved by coaches earlier okay so see uh, i don't know who has asked this question but anyway uh, the sir, thing steven is steven sir has asked sir oh steven sir okay yes. steven <laughs> uh, yes yeah, steven nice to hear from you see the covid uh, what i said in my lecture also that uh, it has changed a lot because uh, why i am saying so that before covid during the covid we had never imagined that the physical education can be run through online we had never imagined at least in india we had never imagined and i am working for last 30 year we had never imagined that it can 
but once tried but it was failed attempt the motor perception i was my concern was the motor perception of a player position in himself in relation to his teammate in relation to his opponent and in relation to the ball position and when i am talking about these four things i think the pre covid it was very much achieved on the field because that is what i am trying to explain that with the online this is difficult to achieve at least we have uh, till date we uh, we have failed to achieve this particular combination that where you can judge your position in line with your opponent in line with your teammate in line with the ball position in pre covid that was not the condition we used to play on the field only and and we used to train our athlete accordingly but in post covid area or during this covid area most of the player are facing this challenge to a great extent and we have to address yet yet we have not addressed fully thank you very much thank you so much sir thank are you are there any more questions i think one more question is there that the during the covid 19 pandemic era the coaches and the athlete also had a lot of trouble what advice do you give to deal with such situation effectively uh, sir uh, every individual deals with the difficult time in their own way and i would only say the first you have to believe that it is a temporary phase and this shall to pass nothing is going to be static forever it's going to pass the first feeling is that because i have noticed one thing in this covid era and especially during the lockdown that the people were psychologically very much depressed very much uh, lonely in that within the wall of the home and that was the biggest challenge and the first belief that it's going to change itself will change the thought process so first you have to develop start believing in yourself that it's going to go away it's going to change definitely second thing is there are certain skills which we can work individually and we can practice ourselves there are certain things which required group but there are certain things which we can work and i would say the coaches must enhance their knowledge when they are within the wall when they are not meeting many people in the crowd it is a good time it is a very good time that you are with you identify introspect yourself introspect yourself improve upon as a person and at the same time it is an golden opportunity to accumulate the knowledge when you are within your room you develop your knowledge you the volume of knowledge also you can improve upon when you are sitting at home thank you very much dr lalit with your kind permission yeah. i will add to it that even if uh, we take uh, such type of conference and we discuss and deal with all the uh, present uh, pandemic situation until and unless we as a physical educators update ourselves with information yeah. technology it is not possible to convey our training skills to our sportsmen or to our students in the field of physical education and sports because we don't know as dr kristen sir uh, steven sir said how long it is going to be whether it is going to be a month when it is going to be years we don't know because one or other mutants is coming every now and then and uh, it is not possible to start our full strength uh, physical education activities or coaching on field so we have to train our athletes using virtual platform only and using the virtual platform what sort of tools and techniques we should use to update our athlete we have to learn and we had learned a lot and this pandemic situation has taught us to do so so what uh, that that's what i feel until and unless we update ourselves 
dealing with information technology and all these thing it is not going to possible for us to develop all the motor skills as far as psychological aspect is concerned through virtual uh, teaching we can uplift there at, but the practical aspect of it is only possible until and unless we are uh, updated ourselves with this information technology aspect dr dapan i am 100% That's agree i am i am 100% agree with you and the thing is that that is why during the lecture i also i have talked about that now we should switch over to build a small small capsules for practical teaching also but that capsule should not be more than 5 to 8 minute capsule because if you are making too long capsule then the player or an athlete may not be able to digest that for a longer period of time so it is advised that the teacher should be trained to develop the moves of 5 to 8 minute and only one skill or the divide complete skill into 5 to 8 minute of four or five skills so by that time if if we can uh, say or as the steven has also that that how long it's going to be then at least we should be ready to face the certain skills so i think it's a good time to train our teachers also to develop the online material for the physical education practice or for the practical teaching also and i would go one step ahead that even for skill learning also we should go like a simple badminton skill forehand backhand we can teach always online there are a lot of things out there but every teacher has to be trained in that particular that that mooc should be standardized mooc and we have to think over it yes nice suggestion it was thank you uh, thank you sir thank you lalit sir uh, thanking you sir for wonderful presentation and uh, information i request dr asnare sir to conclude this session dr asnare sir asnare sir good afternoon to good afternoon to one and all present on this e platform it is indeed a great pride and proud privilege for me that we are witnessing the international conference organized by the one of the famous college of physical education situated in nagpur that is nagpur sharirik shikshan mahavidyalay on the topic role of sports psychology and fitness management for the sportsman during the covid 19 i really apologize for not having my video on as i am sitting in the waiting lounge of the hospital so it could not be possible for me to just put on my video but i have attended the entire conference fully especially the second session which has been really conducted well by uh, dr lalit sharma it is one of the famous name in the field of physical education who is also rendering the services as a associate professor in the one of the famous national physical education college indira gandhi college situated in delhi first of all i accept my heartiest congratulations dr lalit sir for giving the very useful and valuable information and sharing this information with all the uh, participants he has chosen the topic that is challenges for the athletes and coaches for returning to the performance yeah, during his lecture dr lalit sharma sir has actually given emphasis on the four important factors which are important for returning the performance especially he has thrown the light on the factors hai na aawaz kaun aata that is personality physical character characteristics techniques and tactics personality ke bare mein dr lalit sharma ne kehte hue personality par kis tarah se vatavaran ka bahut prabhav padta hai aur kyon vyaktitva jo vyakti ka hota hai wo vikasit karte samay vatavaran ko bhi dhyan mein rakhna chahiye iske bare mein bhi dr lalit sharma sir ne bahut achhi jankari yahan par di unhone कहते समय ही हैज गिवन मोर एम्फेसिस ऑन द एग्जीक्यूटिव फॉर्मेशन जो है उसके बारे में भी काफी उन्होंने अच्छी जानकारी हमें उपस्थित सभी प्रतिभागियों को दी ही बिलीव इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अचीव द गोल 
while achieving the goal it is always said that what is your role while achieving the goal but instead of giving more emphasis on the role he is of the opinion that while we are playing in the team the important factor is to achieve the goal aur ye goal achieve karte samay mein humne hamara role kaun sa hai isse bhi zyada hamari upayuktata ek team mein kis tarah se ho sakti hai iske bare mein kafi achhi jankari sabhi upasthit pratibhagiyon ko di he believe that interdependence is more important than independence or dependence i really uh, appreciate the concern which you have actually shown regarding the uh, improvement and requirement of the teammates in the team unhone uh, decision making ability bhi kitni important hai iske bare mein bhi yahan par jankari di sath hi mein is sampurna lecture mein sociological aspects jo hote hain jisme team interaction cooperation and how communication is more important while we are uh, पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ टीम स्पोर्ट इज इम्पोर्टेंट इसके बारे में भी डॉक्टर ललित शर्मा सर ने बहुत ही अच्छी जानकारी दी वाइल गिविंग सम इम्पोर्टेंट इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द मोटर परसेप्शन ही हैज शोन हिज कंसर्न अबाउट द ऑनलाइन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ फिजिकल एजुकेशन क्लासेस ललित शर्मा सर से मैं यहाँ पर uh, एक बात मेरा मत व्यक्त करना चाहता हूँ कि ऑनलाइन फिजिकल एजुकेशन के बारे में जिस तरह से इंदिरा गांधी राष्ट्रीय शारीरिक शिक्षा महाविद्यालय ने प्रयत्न किए ऐसे प्रयत्न डिस्टेंस एजुकेशन या करेस्पॉन्डेंस कोर्स के थ्रू करने की कोशिश कई लोगों ने की लेकिन मैं आपसे सहमत हूं सर कि थेरोटिकल आस्पेक्ट्स जितने हैं और साथ में प्रैक्टिकल आस्पेक्ट्स जितने हैं उसमें शारीरिक शिक्षा की जो पाठ्यक्रम है सही मायने में हम लोगों तक पहुँचाने में यशस्वी हो या नहीं इसके बारे में भी आपने आपके लेक्चर के दौरान यह चिंता व्यक्त की लेकिन मैं अपने आप में एक मत रखना चाहता हूं कि क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ प्रैक्टिकल एंड थ्योरी क्लासेस अगर हम करते हैं तो वो क्लासिफिकेशन करने के बाद में सही मायने में कितने आवर्स या कितने क्रेडिट्स हम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ प्रैक्टिकल क्लासेस को देते हैं अगर उतने हम डिडक्ट या सब्ट्रैक्ट करते हैं मेजर करिकुलम से और थियोरटिकल आस्पेक्ट जो कवर करने के लिए जितने भी आज तकनीकी स्वरूप के माध्यम उपलब्ध है उनका अगर हम सही मायने में उपयोग करते हैं तो इस वर्गीकरण के द्वारा हमें ऑनलाइन फिजिकल एजुकेशन के क्लासेस भी चलाते आएंगे मैं अपने आप को सौभाग्यशाली मानता हूं कि ललित शर्मा सर जैसे एक प्रबुद्ध जो व्यक्ति है शारीरिक शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में उनके इस सेशन के लिए मुझे आयोजकों ने चेयरपर्सन करके जो जिम्मेदारी दी चूंकि मैं एक अस्पताल में निजी स्वरूप में किसी कारणवश आया हूं मैं अपना वीडियो ऑन नहीं कर पा रहा हूं मैं आप सभी से एक बार क्षमा प्रार्थी हूं और अपने आप को सौभाग्यशाली मानता हूं कि डॉक्टर ललित शर्मा सर जैसे एक बहुत ही अच्छे व्यक्तित्व के धनी उनका आज यहां पर जो लेक्चर हुआ आशा करता हूँ कि इस लेक्चर की वजह से हम सभी प्रतिभागियों को काफी फायदा होगा और उन्होंने जो चैलेंजेस फॉर एथलीट्स एंड कोचेस फॉर रिटर्निंग टू द परफॉर्मेंस ये जो टॉपिक पर आज हमें जानकारी दी मैं निश्चित रूप से ये मानता हूं कि इसका फायदा आने वाले दिनों में हम निश्चित रूप से देख सकें वंस अगेन आई आई एम थैंकफुल टू द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू चेयर द सेशन एंड एज आई एम नॉट एट ऑल इन अ कंडीशन टू जस्ट पुट ऑन माय वीडियो आई वंस अगेन अपोलॉजाइज टू द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स एंड आई एम थैंक यू हैंडिंग ओवर माइक टू डॉक्टर तपन दत्ता फॉर द फर्दर प्रोसीडिंग्स thank you asnare sir i hope you are well and you are doing good and uh, thank I'll you sir talk to you, uh, i'll talk to you later on after completion of schedule and i i think that nothing uh, uh, worst has happened with you so i'll talk to you later in this case uh, so uh, choudhary sir with your permission if i can uh, share the tomorrow schedule uh, will it do Ten forty-five. Ten 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 forty-five. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow session shall I shall I declare tomorrow session? Ha. It may one. Ah, so it is the information uh, for uh, all all the uh, delegates. Ah. Uh, uh, that uh, will conclude our first day session here. Mm -hmm. I am thankful to all the resource person and my special and heartiest gratitude to Dr. Stephen Christensen. uh sir for
Yes, I think uh, Dr. Tapan Datta has got disconnected. Participants are requested to join us back tomorrow at 10.45 a.m. The link will be shared with all of you in the WhatsApp group. And the feedback link will also be shared uh, in the WhatsApp group at 6 p.m. today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Please Thank you for a wonderful at... session. Thank you. Thank you. Please join us tomorrow at 10.45 sharp so Hara? that we'll be able to start the program at 11 a.m.